it still takes a bit longer, while if you have like three military schools, you're fine. It's finally time. Let's hear it loud and proud, crowd, because it's time to get underway with the second semi-finals, Beastie QE versus Marine Lord. Let's open up with Gorge. Ottomans, the pick for Marine Lord is looking into those military schools. So collect 50 oh, stone to start this one off. This will be some spearman play. And look at that. Gorge has come through the drafting phase eight times. And I actually think this makes a lot of sense. Um, the, the most popular map is Dry Arabia, 15 picks, right? Mm -hmm. Gorge in first place. These are maps that you kind of look at and there's loads of differing ideas and they don't feel oppressive or like you can't do anything at all. I believe there was only one map that was better off and it was Mediterranean at nine picks. Mm -hmm. Mediterranean obviously mainly picked because people felt like, wow, we have no idea how it's going to be played out. Exactly. I tried to surprise you. While on Gorge, we kind of know that it will be played out with a limited wooden version of Arabia. Yes, most definitely. We maybe get to see some Mediterranean if we go deep enough. Of course, that was one of the drafted maps. It, it just fits, you know, like the Priory as well. Uh, same map picks as Coach. So th there's kind of a clear pattern and it's, it becomes a little bit predictable. I'm still wondering if someone's going to try to throw a curveball like Mountain Clearing. Of course, we didn't get it because both of these guys insta ban Mountain Clearing and, and then Wetlands on mm. each side, which are the two least popular maps. Do you think we might see Mountain Clearing in the finals? Uh, Mister, maybe throwing. Maybe it's a long day. Maybe you forget about it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I've seen that in high stakes environments. It just slips your mind. You never live it down. B security. His oval very much to the front there for his rush distance would be short, but Marino obviously will have some spearmen there for the defense in case B security wants to go for the aggression. Right now, three on wood. Yeah. So. I'm wondering and barracks I'm and yeah, barracks in Dark Age. I was, I was about to say, I'm wondering if he just does this, like mass spears, because you can get them online so quickly in Dark Age mm -hmm. before uh, before BC has the flexibility to get into archers. And it's kind of funny because you make sure you win the fight against the spears coming, and then afterwards, because of this UV placement, especially, you can just go do to the Mongols what they're now doing to you. Oh, sick! So Mongols, yeah, you, they open double spearmen, mm -hmm. but Marine Lord, he will get so many more. And still not really a wood line in the back. The first tower. I wouldn't even know where I place the first tower if I'm beastie here. It has I mean, to be next to the gold. Two wood lines, right? So you have to go past the first and onto the gold. And Always course, build next to the gold and yeah. block them away from pure age. But like almonds kind of like they shrug this for a little bit. They're never really rushing for the, the tech up. I, I think like if BC then quickly techs up in the feudal, if Marine Lord has like eight spearman plus, he just comes to your base, burns your Uvi, burns like your racks, traps it so it can't run away. And then you're very uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Defensive tower would need to be there, but yeah. tricky to get spearmen in there because you want to have them at the front yourself. It's also the idea that as you passively pr progress this spearman count mm -hmm. while paying for the other half of it, um, you're going to get enough to just burn down the outpost every day of the week. Right? Okay. And the cost to you is going to be very limited because you didn't pay full price for all those spears like other civs would who are countering it. Nice scouting there by Marino. Didn't really have a lot of intention to go for anything else than scouting the Ovu and then knowing what production he wanted to go for. Still not on gold, so indeed Double. delayed there. And, ooh, Khan trying to micro bit. Yeah, he's just gonna keep the spears busy. He sees them coming. You can see on the count, like BC, he's probably gonna stop at five here. Maybe add in possibly one more. And I think you try to find a way to wiggle your way up because otherwise this just turns into a long-term spear fiesta. Yeah. And um, that one side is going to have three units in there. The other is eventually going to run out of stone to get that double production. And at that stage, you, you kind of lose out long term as the Mongols. Ah, Spearmen now have to go back, at least I thought so. But Marino is going aggressively. And I think Beastie, he will be happy that he denied this for now. Spearman goes really low, really low, and to the zero HP. Yeah, yeah, he gets one of them. The tower is still going to go up. And you see what I'm talking about. Marine Lord says, OK, well, I don't need to fight you right now. Mm. So I outmass your spears at home. What if I just kill the racks and then we can't do this infinite spear game, right? We can't do that dance anymore. What about the Khan trying to defend here? Yeah, because the Khan's really going to defend, Nilly. Like, um, one he, HP he at a time now, right? One HP at a time. <laughs> oh. Two. He'll get two. Yeah. Okay. We're generous here. I mean, maybe a preemptive tower could have been an option, or yeah, is that too expensive? But it slows you down, right? Look at his wood. He's, he's mm. burning all of it right now for that outpost aggressively. So yeah, it's that kind of idea where you can see it go, ha, BC, you knew. Why don't you just build a tower? It's like, bro, where do I get the extra resources for this? Also going there, and if then Marine Lord attacks something else or tries to go for the defense, becomes a bit more tricky. Yeah. Tower there, I think this will be tricky to defend, right? It's, it will be really far out. I think Marine Lord just goes to the forward wood line and he's kind of fine. As long as he doesn't lose his spears. This is the important detail. This is one of the weaknesses you have if you do get outmassed. 
Maneuver Arrow comes out, you're just going to have to run away, getting stabbed in the Tusky on the retreat. Mm, nice push away here for Beastie, is stabilizing. Therefore, Oval continues with the stone production. Gold obviously taken at the top for Marino, so he can click up eventually. And goes for the wood line here. Now, ooh, but it just sniped, did not happen. Okay, the, the scout was quite lucky there. The spearman didn't quite cut across in time. If you lose the scout there, you just don't know exactly what BC is doing on the other side. But it, it looks really trivial. This is actually the correct way, I think, to play this matchup, though. Like, the Mongol player has to keep double downing and then eventually tech up. Mm -hmm. And the cool thing for him is Marine Lord was heavily delayed in his tech up because he got blocked on this gold. Can we check the vision of BC Cutie? If he has any idea that there will be a gold at the Top. No, he hasn't no. even checked there. He, no. he didn't even bother. Because he only went for a Khan, so he gathered enough sheep to get him by, and then he wanted to have the Khan be part of the early harassment. But the minaret is now being shown, so Beastie knows, okay, you have to get gold somewhere. Yeah, and this is a great placement. Uh, the Muslim pointed out that most players are, are always placing the minaret exactly here, because it gives you the shortest distance to retreat into the TC if you get harassed. Mm. Oh, yeah, yeah, because the... The berries spawn basically the, spawning yeah, the at the top edges. Yeah, exactly. Okay, Mapu is showing you. He already, he's already got it embedded in his memory. Nice, nice. Shout out to Mapu as well, you know. Oh, First Spearman on him. the ambitious side. One goes down. And there we go. Now look at the count. This time it works. He's even yep. got the meta. So Marine Lord went in for the early point into the meta, mm -hmm. which means he now has the move, movement speed. Why is this important? Even with Beastie now unlocking the Yam, all he does is now match the speed of the Ottoman Spearman. Mm -hmm. But then yeah. you still don't have the attack speed. Oh. But the Altman's dick. Arrow slits now coming in here. Mm -hmm. Obviously in the tower far behind, still getting the gold. Spearman are coming over. Beastie. I think this has to be transitioned into an archer range, but... Yeah, he needs to get control first though. He's going to look to take the flash, and he does have the edge here with the hardened Spearman upgrade, but still, see, attack speed buffer even pushes the villager away, so it looks like the Uvu will still go down at the end of the day. Marine Lord still has the favorable count in terms of spears. We'll look to back away though. Uh, one summer getting chased at the top and indeed Ovo now goes down. Uh, Khan is helping out a bit more. Obviously in Feudal Age can shoot and move. Mm -hmm. but yeah, yeah, he only shoots for a tickling, right? That's always the issue. Not going to kill too many troops, but it's, it's every little bit counts, right? It is just free damage at this stage. Issue is you can just move away with the meta. You just stay in formation, you keep pulling away quicker, but instead he just chooses to turn around and harass. Interesting choice. I think Marino is making a transition at home, so he wants to slow the arrival in his own base. Wheelbarrow now as well, so Marine Lord wow. feels like, okay, I don't even have to invest that much into military right now. I see. So I think he was delaying the spearman come back to his base, so he had a second group of spears getting rid of the outpost. He hasn't gone and gotten rid of the, the right side outpost there, right? That's still there, so that's still a, a limiting factor for him if he wants to go long term. But he has got this gold up top, he is in age 2, he doesn't really need much more gold than this. Archer range edit, blacksmith edit as well for faster production here. And this feels like a really long feudal age potentially. Mm -hmm. Although B Security already sitting at 420 gold. That's a bit surprising to me. Isn't this the fast castle behind this? Because only 13 on food feels like not enough, but he's still three on gold. That's I don't really understand this build then. So Will you barrel? Okay. You know, Age of Empires 4 is a game of reactions, right? You have to you have to see what your opponent's doing, kind of knee-jerk react to it. If BC sees or anticipates this blacksmith's coming from Marine Lord, which it always will. He's probably worried Marine Lord's going to get tech upgrades. Mm -hmm. So maybe he's got this gold to get blacksmith upgrades. Mm-hmm. Well, goes for Eco 4 now. Both players are opting for that. Outpost is going bye-bye. So he will have access to the gold. Um, it's not as much about getting access to the gold, though, as now depriving your opponent of vision of what you're doing next. But speaking of what Beast is going to do next, we see him. He's finally heading up north because he understands how did he ever get a tech yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, Has yeah, he yeah. still got villages out in no man's land? Next military school, we go for 1-1-1. One, one, one. Have the stable, have the barracks, have the bar uh, archer range there as well. But oh, that villager a bit in trouble, but instant reaction by Marine Lord. Yeah, and he's going to have to pull back the people in the stone as well. Looks like he does get what he needs out of the equation, though, unless he's thinking about going for a TC. He could. His zero villages on stone, right? Now, uh, how many? Yeah. He hopped them back. It's just the military school. Okay, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So another point invested over there. So yeah, this is, this is looking pretty respectable for Marine Lord right now. He's escalating. Beastie's not escalating at the same pace. I think Beastie needs to find a way up to Castle Age. And then you just look to swarm this archer ball you know is coming with the first few Lancers. I love that he's playing Pocket Egos, by the way. I, I've been very hard on Mongol players that don't do this because it's mm -hmm. important. Mm -hmm. You still have map control. Like, realistically, Marine Lord is defending. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You can see it in the vision where he hasn't been. So you should be out on boars or deers delaying your pasture timing, which is incredibly important on maps like this that have limited wood. 
Yeah, I, I think especially because B Security, he won't build any more Feudal Age Army, right? Oh, nice aggro here on the boar. Here, Peggy, Peggy. You want to play? The, the no. counter attack will come eventually from Marine Lord. While B Security might be in Castle Age, but still not have enough army. So having yeah. those towers preemptively. But that's why he goes right to the back corner, nearly. He, he's literally as far away from the bases as possible now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just many hills. Oh, it goes oh, for the nice scouts. Strike. Nice one. Yeah, and that's stripping vision, right? That's just preventing. If you look at Marine Lord now, he sees nothing. He's got, he's got one guy on the Stay. other side. Wow. Oh, the Sapagi, they're in the wrong place. Ooh, need some more scouting, and that's a scout indeed. Like, where do, do you attack? Typically, you now attack the deer, try to go for the gold, check out the wood line. He has no idea where any of that is. He hasn't kept track of, uh, track of it, right? He doesn't even know about this ball. If we go and check Marine Lord's vision, I don't think he scouted that area, right? Yeah, it, so yeah. it doesn't exist. Pumba's yeah, yeah. not real. I mean, <laughs> you wouldn't care, right? You're an Ottoman player. You don't recognize balls. You're not even allowed to touch them, unless you want to get manned. Third, <laughs> third military school now on the way. Military count is one Khan against 26 units. He needs some friends pretty damn soon. What are we going for? Because right now, that single barracks looks pretty lonely. Now it's it stable. Does. stable. It has to be stable. If you go in men at arms, you're just going to die to mass archers, whereas lances can get in and out, maybe poke and prod. They can even choose to just go after the base and the economy instead. You know, it doesn't outright kill the Ottomans, though. The, the, the remarkable thing about the Ottomans is they can have their entire economy idle or dead for a few minutes and still somehow win a game. Yeah, yeah, absolutely crazy because everything is produced. Free! Yeah. Uh, unrelated from what your villagers are actually doing. And while well, this tower is still getting pushed, how many men at arms do we get out here? Like four? Maybe four. It depends how quick Marine Lord wants to prioritize it. Remember that that attack speed is going to affect the torch attack speed as well mm -hmm. from the aura. So, so he, he's going to get through this fast. Yeah, he has to give oh, up. he even gives he, it up. He can pinch it. He can move forward now because he has more movement speed and he can just body block it and it won't get away. Instead, he, he clicks a bit too soon. He tries to torch it down instead. Okay, and now the men at arms what, need bro, to. Bro, where are we going? Well, pretty far away. I think he's in a scout. different control group. He doesn't. He didn't get the memo. Uh, like, yeah, we can take this out. <laughs> We're at the bar, buddy. Meet us there. Oh, uh, was told to fight. Ovu now goes down for the second time at the same spot. I think B Security will aim for another spot for the next Ovu. Yeah, it's like 150 wood, 150 wood. Like you just that, you just count it in your your head. It's like this is just a loss. There's another loss. Remember, there's not much wood on this map. And, yeah. Yeah. In fairness, there's little stone left in that. But he is at least getting the lances out. And I think that's one cool thing about the racks. It it focused attention there. And Marine Lord maybe didn't instantly see that there were lances as well. But considering his scout decided to just go to the Never Realm, right, deep into the Mongol base, he saw everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, has a good idea now. But still, military count at four, right? So <laughs> he, he doesn't mind that much to see this happening. Yeah. Tries to expand a bit more. Now we can see on the minimap how units are finally moving out, trying to find out what's happening. I feel like counting the military pop cap on each side is like if we're doing Marine, <laughs> if we're doing Marine Lord, it's kind of like um, you're an orc, you're like oh blah, blah 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 blah, and then on the other side with BC, it's like one up uh, up, uh, two up uh, up, uh, like and you'll be complete on the count around the same time. BC Cutie cannot get his resource on the map, so limited on wood. He needed a second barracks, needed a second stable, or like maybe the overproduction now goes for the second stable. Gold not looking too hot either. This the will be a pretty coming. crazy push, and this gold is relatively exposed, right? If those villagers are getting idled you can't go for more military uh, he's sniffing it out he's moving up there right now with a mass that you just can't fight at this stage bc needs probably about 12 12 men arms maybe with yam to feel confident about this fight it's just so many sapahi to clash with and will at least move away has the garrison inside the outpost which means some people are not long for this world and marine lord could quickly begin to take control of this game bc has at least banked a lot of food but he needs to get those heavily armored troops up to a mass of about 12 to 15 fast nice snipe on the meter there village just still dying. Siege works. What? The ram went down. Oh, yeah, wait, wait. Oh, wait. Oh, no. Trailed behind. Because he can't keep it in formation. And when you have everyone else in formation, they're moving faster. So compared to other sieves, you move even further away from your ram. Oh. Well, wow. that was really good for B Security, buying him qu quite some time. Now the ram needs to be built. They found the UV again. Okay. So this is the, the ripple effect. Marine was like, oh, I didn't know there was a, a pig over here. What else is in this corner? But now we're getting onto reasonable numbers, right? Five lances, yes. seven men at arms. If we just get another minute, we have some really strong army here for our Castle Age player that could overwhelm, but Marino now thinking about casting himself. And keep in mind, BC is still playing Southern Corner as well, right? Like he was on the deer, I believe. He went on the, the berries, gold, or whatever he needs down here. This is a cool play because Marine Lord, you know, consider how long it took him to check the, the left corner. If you check his vision, 
He still hasn't checked the south corner, right? Yeah. Oh, well, Scout coming, though. Here we go. He's like, wait a second. Is he doing something else out here? This doesn't make sense to me. But he's like, D not taken, although he knows, okay, wow, yeah, have, have the That's board. That's a smart play out of, out of a beastie. Going on the berries, just, you wouldn't do it, right? It's not optimal. You're not playing perfect, nearly. You could get a better gathering ray. What a lie. Maybe that's, he wanted to go for it a bit later because it's closer no, no, to no. his town it, center. It, is it mind games? I think it's mind games. It's like, you know, this is less likely to, to be explored. This is less greedy, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, and it's, it's further out. If this was the other way around, it's a stupid play because, like, he's going to move to the deer anyway. Mm -hmm. But the deer's inward, so it's less likely he goes further out because Marine Lord only has, like, limited vision with Sapahi. He's trying to be optimal. Oh, okay. Love that. And now the Lance is trying to find something. Still knows the gold at the top could be, well, a bit underprotected. Imperial Armory here. So free siege production for our Ottoman player. And the ridiculous part is you don't just get free siege. You saw it there when we hovered on it. Ooh, Lance that was quite some range. Holy moly. Oh, what? Damn. Oh, <laughs> full screen shot there for the Springled. I... <laughs> Yeah, these things are a bit weird, the interactions. Like longbows when a scout runs away. It's like, watch <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's like where's that arrow going? Yeah, it's like, fly! And it's like, see, like, it looks like it's not going to make it, and then he activates the, the jump jet on it. Right? Yeah, it's like in the comics, and you see the face on the arrow, and it's like flying in there. Activating hyper speed here, and this is going to have to be a speedy reaction. You see Lancers were trying to breach on the northern side, but good defense, at least initially out oh. Marine Lord. Does have an eco lead, a military lead, but he needs to get his premium units out. It's not going to be fast for him. Great control there by Marine Lord, disengaging. The spearmen were a bit out of position. Men at arms tried to chase down, and then both armies kind of neglecting each other. Marine Lord trying to combine his army, still better numbers, and a reasonable villager lead. A bit surprising here, nine already. But yeah, we saw seven kills. It, it's the, it was mainly oh, around the, five the board, towers. right? Five yeah, yeah, towers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Really big deal there. And speaking of towers, the ones that Marine Lord have are going to protect him in those areas. And the brilliant thing is, there's not as much burden on you to have people gathering on economy, right? You've just got all this passive reduction and well, oh, speaking of economy, oh, oh. that wood line was looking thin, but now it looks like it's time to thin the herd of villagers. We'll move in, strikes down three of them and shifts out to the right side. Great Khan. raid by Beastie. Khan in danger we'll though. Khan, though. Oh, no. Lancers are getting out, now going for the tower, but the double tower setup will take I quite have. some time to take those down and potentially with some losses. And there's more army coming to support. Yeah, he, I mean, you, you're going to get pinched here if you hang around too long. The spears are coming. He gets through one of the towers, snipes one of the villagers, but that should be Yoshi Rose. He's going to try to wrap around now with the Lancers, and Marine Lord is baiting him in. He wants him to commit onto the villagers because he'll turn around and kill all these premium Lancers. Instead, he'll overwhelm the men at arms, and Beastie, He's off. He says, okay, I'm going to go back into the economy of Lancers and see what I can find. Okay, take some control at the front. Woodline still the only one. And oh, look at that. That's like triple pronged attack right now. Hey, he's coming everywhere. He's, he's playing Mongols the way he wants to, right? Raid here, raid there, raid everywhere. Because behind this, he's grabbing up relics. He's already up to four shaman and bumping even higher. We might be going to a mass healing strat against the Ottomans. Oh, but then I want to see some relics picked off as well. One on the way already in B security. Right now, he has all the map control, right? Marino, yeah, he has very solid numbers. Look at that, 53, 53. But everything basically within reach of a starting town center. Yeah, it is spooky. Whenever you give map control over, most of these maps have been designed to amplify that power you get from map control, and BC is doing a remarkable job of using that well. He's going to start sniping out the crossbows, because as we know, crossbows in small numbers don't counter out these lancers. You need time. How do we still have... How do we have five shamans I, and I, not a single relic picked up already? I, I think Where he, were he, was, they? he was waiting. He was waiting until everything's contained, and now he's moving out. It looks like he was patrolling as well. Like He wants them to be safe, because the Sapahi was still kind of pseudo patrolling from Marine Lord, right? They weren't fully defending, but done with defense. Now we move on to offense. Marine Lord is going to shift over. He'll spot the villagers on the deer and they will instantly pack up and run back to Mami. Nice, nice uh, timing there for sure. We're now going into Spearman here for Beastie. So it feels like his men at arm lancer composition, not the one winning him. Military numbers are looking mighty scary it's here spook. in favor of our Frenchman. It's super spook, right? This is the difference though. We've got premium on one side crap on the other, but that's, <laughs> that's changing, right? When Ottomans reach Castle Age, it changes. You're seeing crossbows come out. You're seeing men arms being prepped. We've already got a Maganel in the field. Wall Lol is going to be attempted. Tries to the body blocks. He's been watching a little bit of part before gameplay. Not able to do it, though. Marine Lord on point with the micro. Now it's to body block again so that the Shaman is getting home. Next attack onto the over third time and over dies this game. Nah, 450 wood. I'm just keeping track. I'm not very good at counting, but I can at least count that high. And it looks like the Shaman is going to go down. Sabahi, though, are not pulled away. 
So villagers will kill them in the end, but this is also idle villagers while you're losing a lot at home. And those two relics you just banked, I don't think they're going to be making a return on the investment. Improved siege engineering there could be canceled, Bye. and then you can't get it because you don't have the oval. The archers can just attack this. He's going to body block it, and remember, oh! this has no ranged armor. That's a prayer tent with two relics. PC is going to lose it, and he was being greedy. He's going on the second TC. Oh, felt like he needed to get an advantage via economy, and it's getting punished. Be security now trying to get a spring placement but he's still so raidable on so many different spots this is the difference bc has been very calm content he's been the aggressor he's been micro in all these different groups now marine reload is getting full control he's splitting up and saying okay you what you just dumped to me for 15 minutes mm -hmm. i'm not gonna do to you for 15 minutes uh, i don't think this game is going to go on for 50 minutes if marine lord is continuing the with this production it's over 80 military these in 21 long. game. They take too long, nearly. That's the issue. You see, he tried to knee jerk react. Mongols used to be able to do this, but the extra build time is a bit too much. Marine Lord will take game one and finally get the Ottomans a win on Gorge. And that against Mongols, where we felt like Mongols could be so good with the tower rush, came on the gold side, but so calm and collected. Marine Lord moving out far away from his base to get to Feudal Age. And we see the potency of the Ottomans, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, honestly, the Ottomans are the truest sieve that embodies, you know, the classic British adage, you know, keep calm and carry on. Mm -hmm. Right. Oh, my base is on fire. Oh, all my villagers are dead. Just keep calm, buy a little bit of time. You know, I've got Sepahi coming out for free soon. I'll have a free Maginel in a minute. We can still turn this about. Yeah, and, and, and he did, right? It's just like so much running there and where did be security go wrong? It's so tough to like point a finger on something where we felt, okay, an approach could have been different. Like the Ovu obviously was really unfortunate for him. Yeah. Maybe needed to have a tower there, but then you need to go more on wood, later fuel age. I think spearmen? This is the beautiful thing. Games like this, it's less like uh, less about what someone done wrong and just how great both players play back and forth. Maybe one thing you'd highlight is BC never found out about that gold vein to the north side. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right, but that, that's once again this whole idea of optimizing. We saw that on both sides where Marine Lord didn't scout out the boar mm. or the berry patch for a very long time. So it balanced out once again. I just think once you reach this later phase in the game, you know, you're reaching into the golden age of the Ottomans. I think this is a sieve that peaks in 25 to 35 minutes. And this game ended just shy of that, which, you know, it shows you that this was not even the final form exactly. yet. Exactly. This is not even your final boss to deal with. I've been saying this about a few sieves. You know, HRE still comes to mind. I think there's a few things not explored on water maps there yet. But it's incredible how HRE on water and Ottomans on land are just the dictators. Whew. Be security, though. Pretty confident in his skill. Now has to decide which home map he wants to go for. Obviously, he can pick all the four available maps. Typically, we have seen players in the quarterfinal stage and semifinal stage go for their own home maps. So Prairie or Mediterranean. I think shaking it up with Mediterranean could be a good I think four legs. idea. Four legs? Why is that? So I think if you go four legs, you pull Roos off of both. And then you have Ottomans. Maybe you want to try that thing we've been seeing Boulder Bay, like where people fail with. But you know what? If there's any man who can do it in that situation, it'd be Beastie. I mean, if you don't believe me, just hear from the man <laughs> himself. My name is Beastie Cutie, and I come from Serbia. I just tried to play with as many people as I could. If they were not on my side of the bracket or the group, because I wanted to avoid that, try to get the variety and to make sure I'm prepared for everything. I came as one of the higher seeded players and my first match is someone I'm very comfortable playing against. And overall group, I feel pretty good. Both groups are really, really difficult, but I think going into potentially playoffs, I like my group and my chances. You know, best of threes are always scary in the group stage, but as long as I make it into the playoffs, best of fives or maybe even best of seven series, I think suit me way more. And my main goal is just getting basically out of the best of three stages and going into longer series. So far, the event's been great. You know, seeing everyone and meeting the new players has been really fun. Um, I have been competing for quite a while, so I do have LAN experience and uh, I'm just looking forward to, you know, playing once again and competing. As long as I play my game and I do what I practiced, I should be able to do really well. Most confident, probably the AOE2 guys because they haven't had as much practice. 
Specifically, I want to play against the Viper. He beat me at the chess game earlier, and I'm pissed, and I did my revenge. Always great to hear from our favorite Serb. You know, he's, um, he, you know, he's not my favorite favorite sub. Really? Oh, that's right. You've got it's my second favorite one. sub. Like, he still made the top five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to fill out that that list. But definitely a favorite of a lot of people here. Beastie, of course, always been a, a staple community from day one. Marine Lord not far behind him, and you know he's just thinking for it. He's processing. You know, how do we do this? What's going to be the play? Because we mentioned the possibility of something like four lakes coming out. Mm -hmm. The whole idea is you flip the script, right? Because right now we, we were talking through the predictability of where each of these sieves should be picked. Mm -hmm. I, I still believe that BCQ is more likely to go for something like Mediterranean, his own home map, where he clearly has a plan. HRE could absolutely be an option there. We have seen him multiple times trying to get all the wood advantage there using the Perlade. Still hasn't really decided on something. And, like they're taking their time, like thinking very intensely. Obviously, they know how much there's on the line. I, I know it's not for that, but the backgrounds is kind of making it's like it's like it's a water map, guys. Look, there's there's water in the background. Ooh. There's even a ship right there. Ooh. Ooh. I mean, it's a high probability we get a water map, right? We have Boulder free. Bay, Mediterranean. <laughs> <laughs> no, I see water on the draft. It must be. Okay. It's, so it's it's full X. Rules episode? I think so. Um, okay. We'll get confirmation in a sec, but I'm pretty sure it, this just screams full X to me. No. It's uh, Boulder Bay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So they are flipping the script. Because so, the, the thing I was going to say is if this is full X, this is just like following the script. Mm -hmm. People still think Roos is good, but Abbas's is better. Abbas's is dominant. We saw that from Mister. Roos are uh, zero wins on, on Boulder Bay, on, uh, full X so far. They just mm -hmm. get dumpstered, despite, despite the fact they used to be the SDS Civ. But I love the fact that we're flipping the script a little here. I think Abbasids could have a use in Boulder Bay because we've seen some spawns where you're super tight next yeah, to each other. Yeah, yeah. And if you just mass docks, you can get in placements and yeah. the Roost player can't do anything. But we have not seen that yet on Boulder Bay, right? Not yet. I think we have seen some Boulder Bay games where like, they were within one screen and arrow in placements for the docks would have been crazy good. Mm -hmm. But right now it was full water play. Plus, how much are you slowing yourself down, right? The opponent then goes for galleys, you put 100 stone in there, and then you have something that shoots some water, but nowhere else. The other guy can go for emplacements a bit later, yeah. then it's a stalemate, but you're so far behind an economy on land. The tough part of doing it against Roos is they just send their fishing boats north, and, you, and you're at that stage, instead of building boats your own, you're building static emplacements that mm -hmm. can't mm -hmm. chase the fishing, right? Yeah. So that's the point of recovery. Um, we'll see what they've got in mind, though, because it's finally time. Game number two between BC and Marine Lord. Take the boat away. <sighs> I'm getting a bit nervous here because we have seen how good the Roos are, right? They can play the super fast uptiming. We just had a seven minute game here on Boulder Bay. And the big question mark will be how Marine Lord is trying to approach this. Yeah, you know, I don't think we're going to get that quick of a game out of these guys. Historically, they don't GG out instantly mm -hmm. unless you're relying on sheep in some games. Um, but. Of course, they'll be relying on the fish in this one. Straight away, Marine Lord just looking to sweep out and get the bounty. We used to see Roost builds that featured the hunting cabin, even on these water maps, to prioritize that extra bounty. But Oh, really? Yeah, ever since the, the a few a few of them have come to mind that the players were doing it. But I think ever since the change to sheep, especially, there's just less bounty on the map, mm -hmm. so less justification for it. Even more so now when you consider you don't really need any gold when you go on water. It's all food and wood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And therefore, hunting cabin, just the 100 wood that you need to invest, you don't really want a second scout. It's just too too late to get to fuel age then and the 100 wood you rather want to have another fishing ship absolutely it's all about those fine timings especially on a map like border bay it's just too tight right so you can't you can't just be delayed by half a minute and feel fine it's such a short distance if i beat you to one boat it's going to be on your fishing line mm -hmm. in about 10 seconds yeah, yeah, yeah although this is not the shortest distance we have seen not right? with the way they're playing it yeah oh sorry you, you meant the lake itself right yeah like yeah. marine lot yeah, it's it's a bit further to the right here. And the, what is that move out? That's a double dock dark edge play. <laughs> it is. So this so is your point. Instead of getting thin and long, we're getting like short and, and thick here, right? But it does in a different way bring them together because you can see Marine Lord's going to play fishing on one side with the Abbasids because he can build these docks for cheap. And now this is going to be his battleground. Meanwhile, Beastie, we said he could move fishing boats away from this, but mm -hmm. he's going to be seen doing it. If we check vision, Beastie doesn't know about this other dock yet. Oh... And Indeed, well, he has oh, no idea. He's worse. scouting in the completely other direction. This is even worse than his first apparent, because now, by the time he sees a dock, it's going to be built. So who just assume this was the first dock? 
But he won't see any fishing ships potentially dropping off there yeah. if he has Maybe an he eye for that. Heals or something. Like if Marine Lamont get big brain, he could bring the fishing boats down. It'll idle a little bit, but you're still building more fishing boats on the right side. And as you saw there, by the way, we are going to see some funky stuff because we're not used to it. This is the first time a basses have been picked this tournament mm -hmm, mm -hmm. on Border Bay. Oh, man. The thing is, we have to take a close look if Marine Lord is going on stone because that's the main resource we need for those arrow emplacements. And also, what are we seeing on land in case we see this? Okay, I go arrow slits defense and just give up my fish. We've yeah. seen it from Capoch, and he tried to go for a castle age all in, actually. Yeah, we did. Capoch has some very interesting strategies, just to kind of double it. Instantly scout it. All good. Yeah, yeah. So he sees it in the end. So one thing I want to highlight here is that the Roost right now can quickly get into the extra wood benefit, right? They build a wooden fortress. They get buffed up at home on the gatherings. We haven't seen it yet because of the fishing, but it will come. One tough part for the Abbasis in comparison, usually we talk about the Golden Age, which shrinks the gap. You get a 15% gathering rate after 10 buildings, mm -hmm. but you're chaining less buildings early on because, you know, usually on a land map, I'm building a stables, I'm building a rack, so I'm building mills. On water maps, you don't do that. Yeah, it kind of has to be like the three, four houses trying yeah. to get to your gold there. You'll get there, but you won't get there as quickly, right? Yeah, yeah, so yeah, the yeah. roost keep the, the big wood advice for a little bit longer. Mm -hmm. House of Wisdom now trying to connect everything quite nicely. Marine Lord 2 on gold, still 13 on wood. Uh, will he get enough food? I think he will certainly need to force drop to get up to fuel edge at a reasonable time. I, I think so. Like, you don't want to fall too far behind here. Something to keep in mind is Marine Lord is definitely going to have to rely on some turtling. The multiple dock approach means that he should have a decent amount of room to keep fishing boats safe. Because remember, BC's almost complete with his landmark. Mm -hmm, as mm -hmm. soon as Marine Lord actually starts hitting the button, he's going to have to wait almost two minutes. Yeah, what, what's the timing difference there? Uh, it could be the full, like, uh, one minute, 35 one minute 30 seconds, maybe. Yeah, yeah something yeah, like that ballpark. Yeah, yeah Marine Lord's going gonna to be about one minute 30 here. So, he should... Oh, wait, the, oh, the goal is... <laughs> He's got it. Click, click. So click. now, yeah, it's more like 135 then, mm -hmm. but it's it's not the end of the world. It just means BC gets initial aggression, which he should as the Roost anyway. Like, you can even choose to convert your ships if you need to. Oh, boy, Rush! What? Pick came to play. Relo is like, no, 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 I do not need to see Benny Boy's mom right now. Please get her away. <laughs> <laughs> He's she, moving she over, the over. but again, second move. He's like, no, no, no. She can come see me after this tournament to celebrate, but not now. Stay away. But what a play out of Beastie. Oh, Just what a crazy move. Toes. It forces him to make another mining camp. That slows him down. And technically, wait, wait, wait. Marino is not allowed to... No, no, he is allowed to attack it. He because is. it's against rules. As long as you don't kill it. Mm -hmm. Actually, okay. Yeah, th that's the thing, that Matt. You can't kill, which is kind of a weird one <laughs> to find yourself in. We saw it with a Marlins player, uh, Vortex, where it's like this boar is attacking him. Mm. Like, he could kill in that situation, but like imagine if you're a Civ that can't and you've built a whole eco area there. It's pretty, pretty frustrating. Marine Lord, those three fishing ships are idle now. Luckily, still has a lot here at the side. Third dock being added there, but still 40 seconds away before he can even start producing. Look at now the even dropping a fourth dock. But yeah, that's the thing. It's his garrison point. He's paying very little wood to get a safe place for all these fishing boats that cost more wood. But where's the wood income, uh, where's the food income now? Hey, you have to delay it. You have to accept that this is a downside, but you have the upside that you're going to push a crap ton of, of food into your bank two or three minutes down the line. How many fishing ships does BCQ have? Because he might have transitioned They're a slower, bit. Right? Shouldn't be yeah. crazy. Yeah, only three fishing ships. That's not sick. Because they cost more. And mm -hmm. you want the aggression. He went four aggressive ships, right? Four archer ships. Yeah. And now, the, the, this is one of the things that's interesting about this play. Like, you lose map control on the water for the first two to three minutes. Mm -hmm. but once those emplacements come out, you get full control again. And Marine Lord, he's got even more wood in the bank. So, curious to see what the plan is here. Should just be a few boats coming out. It is going to be a spring play. This is a good play. Because Beastie hasn't prepped demo ships when they come out because there's too many docks. He can't camp the docks with the demo ships because they could come out of any of these. Yeah, where, where would he go is a big question. Scout now could find the kill against Marino, but he is too active there. And BCQ might be missing this, and then scouting on land will be more tricky. This is a good pickoff potentially. But fight! No, I don't fight! Wanna, I don't want to fight. That's how I do. Oh no, I'm gonna have to fight. Ah, Wait, finally. did he? Ooh. What? Yeah, did he, he lose more HP? He's gonna lose HP? that fight. He's gonna lose the, 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 He took two hits. I think, yeah, I think he mistimed it. Sneaky villager. Beastie. Don't, don't do it. He's got 200 wood. He, he's gonna drop a wooden fortress on the other side of that wood line. And Reno, by the way, floating 800 wood. Crazy look numbers here. Just look at the damage it takes. But 
on the other side, the Spring are now going to start cleaning up. Mm. Two are coming to play, and now yeah. there's the demo shift we were waiting for, and then both the Spring are here. Heavy damage done. Beast, he maintains control. Oh, he strikes back with a quick GG out. One, one apiece. Gurus are crazy on this map. All the aggression, the sneaky villager would have been behind, and those beautiful demo connections. I loved it. BC was playing multiple strategies at the same time. He was prepping a wooden fortress on the back of the wood line that mm -hmm. would have killed villagers off. He timed the demo ships perfectly. We've actually seen players GG out very early on this map. Boulder Bay, I think um, Viper comes to mind. I talked to a few players, the feeling was, you know, the demo ships came out a bit too soon for him, mm -hmm. and he didn't have value for them. You have to time it perfectly with the Roos, because if you don't, you cripple your entire ability to play water at all. Absolutely crazy, and so many fishing ships were still in the dock, so there's no way like, that you can maybe sacrifice your fishing exactly. ship going in front of it. And, and the way he plays it, he, he intentionally pushes Marine Lord into the corner, because mm -hmm. even if he's got fishing boats up elsewhere and they're, they're farming, yeah. if they have to come and repair, they have to run past these archer ships, mm -hmm. they're going to be out in open water, they're going to be sitting ducks waiting to be shot. Yeah, absolutely, especially with the splash damage, with all the arrows in the air, they are going to die after that. You try to micro, but it's going to be really ugly. And those two demos, absolutely perfect. Be security. He cuts out the... I'm glad to see it. I, I said this is going to be close. This could easily be five games. And, and you're seeing like the the next steps, right? They're trying to play one step ahead of each other. They're, they're very patient in their timings. I've seen other players try similar strategies, but they're a bit too fast. They're a bit too quick to pull the trigger and they don't get that bullseye headshot. Instead, they give you like a flesh wound on the arm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Fle it was a flesh wound, but they finished it off with the galleys afterwards. Yeah, okay, decapitated. <laughs> <laughs> looking, looking at the draft, BCQ still has his first three picks. For Marine Lord, yeah. only one out of his first three. Exactly, and, and here's an interesting thing to think about. We're going to Four Lakes next. We talked about this idea of Abbasids and the Roost Clash. Mm. Abbasids are gone. Does Roost tempt you in? And <sighs> if that happens, do we see HRE? Or here's another idea. Here's a crazy one right now, Nearly. Try not to you have You and your crazy out. ideas. Mongols. N no. Why Mongols? Tower rush him. Tower rush him? Woodlines usually can spawn forward of you. If you see they fall, they fall spawn, you block him with outposts. I, I'm because I'm wondering like where like he could say he's probably not gonna I'm feel, I'm going crazy here it's gonna be HRE I think but then if you pick HRE you're kind of forfeiting Medi no. unless you've got a crazy strat because Marino still has HRE yeah I think I think it should be HRE Mirror right yeah, I think so and then I think Mongol tech to become more and more reasonable because Delhi we we are never going to see them on four legs so Delhi has to be for Prairie could you imagine Mongol they... Mongol has to be the pick here. For four legs. Could you imagine there is someone they know about Delhi for four legs that we just don't know? Oh, I don't know what it would no. be. No, no way. Maybe another boar spawns close <laughs> to someone's base, right? <laughs> oh, what well, well, well. is that all about? That's crazy. The, the, the boar that close it because they, they, I don't think they used to spawn that that close, but there's more boar now, right? So it gets mm -hmm. wacky. And then instantly moving away to the other goal, but it was still too close. <laughs> and and then yeah, he the just got a range on that that pig is insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right, like it holds a grudge. You know how we say elephants, they have a memory they never forget? Boars. That pig Boars. never forgets. <laughs> oh. Marilot also was a bit off with his eco balance. Obviously, those fishing ships were so often idled, yes. but at one point he was sitting at like 900 wood and couldn't really produce anything else. Um, unfurl the flags, my friend. It is going to be HRE versus Roos. So, as anticipated, Beastie, mm. it does mean Medi is a potential weak point unless he has an off brand strategy for what we see in this tournament. But is, what it, is it Mongols on Medi then? Is it Tower Rush against HRE? I think like it's Mongols or Ottomans. I think he might try something on land with Ottomans. Ottomans? Yeah. Oh, that, that like, seems like a... It, it, it sounds really weird, but like, wh where else is he going with Ottomans? Because he's still got Mongols and I think he wants them for Prairie. Oh, it was a six pick, right? So it yeah. doesn't need to 100% have a plan with them. Sure, but like, you know, the, the thing is, when these series go on, when you see these curveballs, like we just saw there with the Abbasids coming out yeah, on yeah. Boulder Bay, now you change your plan, right? That, that's the beautiful thing. I, I love that in Age of Empires 4, one thing that makes it so sophisticated, you know, imagine if you could just pick whatever sieve you want all the time. Mm -hmm. You just, I, I counter you, right? It turns into a game, you activate my trap card. But mm -hmm. the beautiful thing is the drafting phase makes this game so beautiful and elegant mm -hmm. and offers you ways to throw your opponent off their plans with throwaway sieves and whatnot. But nothing to throw away here. All strength coming out. 1-1 one, one apiece. Let's go to four legs for a Roos HRE showdown. We need to take a look at the relic placement here as well. It seems like two relatively close for Marine Lord, uh, but he is obviously wow. the Roos player. It feels like three at the top of the corner. And look at this. We talked about the fact we haven't seen many four legs, and that's why. 
6.8 out of 8 score in terms of ban prioritization. That means it's been banned more times than the next three combined. Sick. People, people really hate Forlix. Yeah, they're sick of it. Take that, Bidlin. <laughs> It's a, it's a wild beast, because it's like what you think you know and what, what actually happens. I think a lot of people thought it was going to be Roost dominant, but as I mentioned, like Roost have yet to get themselves a win on this map. Mm -hmm. It's been picked, I think, five times, maybe? Like, it, it doesn't come out often. When I've seen it, I've seen extra towns into play, yeah. which really, like, it's already questionable with Roost in general. And I think on four legs, like, obviously, I, I like... Age of Empires 2 background, we have four legs there as well, and we've seen a lot of 1TC plays, yeah. simply because you're so heavily carried from your food eco on like, water. You know, you want to be greedy versus the greedy Civ, right, in the HRE, because mm -hmm. you know, if you spell it wrong, you, you can start HRE in there. I, I think um, you just can't do it. Like, the timings will be so fast that by the time you're like doing this double TC and you're feeling good, BC is going to be Castle Age picking up all the relics. Yeah, and all three at the top, right? So Regis Cathedral, a bit higher from his town center, and can easily pick some up. And then, well, Apple Battle, so much gold income, very easily for the HR. It's so easy to sneak for the for the ones on the south side. Like, check that stealth forest in the center. It's almost just like vision is denied from both sides mm -hmm, here. Mm -hmm. So keep in mind, if one of these players loses their scout early on, it's going to be incredibly crippling here because you, you just can't play mid-map. And we have seen a prioritization of four legs for a quick switch onto land off the initial boom of, of food eco. Whereas it used to be, we saw players prioritizing the lakes. It was always the lakes. Even 30 minutes in, it's like, I'm going to sneak back in your lake. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. At some point, obviously, it loses in efficiency, like fishing ships so I kind of have to go a bit longer. Plus, you have so many villagers that it's such, such a big difference if you have five fishing ships left, if you're already at 80 villagers. Yeah, and then we've seen the walls go up from BC. He goes, <laughs> I can do this and you can't. Because the roost walls take too long to build now. So if you go and do, if, if Marine Lord says, I need to wall as well, it's going to take over double the time that BC takes to do it. We have it seen it earlier from Lucifron, who was, how, how short was he? Like three seconds, four seconds, something like that? It was, it was a stinger to watch. And then he had to pull the villagers to try mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. rectify the, the issue. And we, I've seen players uh, on maps like Prairie, you know, they try to wall themselves in, which is a hard map anyway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's over double the difficulty for the roost because of that extra time. Yeah, and it's weird how that changed, right? In the past, we felt like, oh, roost walls are too strong. And now they just take so long. Ooh, nice pickup here. Late Whoa. sheep. Has Marine Lord been checking out the local Donna Kebab shops, maybe? <laughs> Likes those. And of course, these don't give bounty anymore. Like, something we have to keep in mind is unless he's going to go for some sort of landmass focus, these sheep, are, they might as well just not be there. Yeah, uh, relatively speaking, the water income is just so much more. Uh, how many villagers does he have on sheep? Like, not a single one right yeah, now. You, you don't want to. I mean, you want multiple lakes, right? So you want to be able to access them as quickly as possible, but he can't. Check what BC done. He snuck north. He has the northern lake. So the only way you can do this is if you now go to the southern one, which he wants to, right? It's weird because when you look at the generation, you almost feel like BC's lakes should be the east side, but they're not. They are still playing home lakes, but because your fishing boats on the roof side cost so much more, mm -hmm. I feel like there's a very heavy delay in you getting on a second lake, especially mm -hmm. when you also then add in the fact that HRE have a 40% gathering speed buff. Mm -hmm. And Marine Lord probably doesn't even have the wooden fortress yet because you're delaying yourself with all these boats. I think you built there the wooden fortress out. here. Yeah, exactly. But still, like that's that's such a heavy, heavy investment. And is there still not a single villager out for Marine Lord on the map? No. Nah. I think he sent a second one to his pond try to defend is he building yeah, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he's, he's ah, doing okay. the walls and he's doing the correct like he's found the right pond i think he's now only scouting the other one to see if it was better maybe because like some of these ponds just get a lot of mountain size and tree lines that mean you don't need many walls to protect it it's the one way that, that roost can maybe be protected like if you get a very open lake though and you have to full wall it oh good god help me but it's now coming over and yeah it's like it's such a big investment right yeah. and he how, how many did he need like four tiles five tiles there that's pretty cheap to yeah. secure yourself it's, the whole pond. It's very efficient. I don't, I don't want to stroke his ego too much, but he's not wasting too much on this. And mm. Great dock placement here, because what you'll notice is you've got this mountain area that's mm. going to stop a dock coming in from Beastie. Yeah. So the only thing that Marine Lord needs to do is head right to the right side, put one or two small slots there, and once again, you're not wasting too much uh -oh, wood or time. But Beastie, there, so. you can see it on the mini-map, he is sending a villager there. Oh, and I think... Oh, the, he's ahead of time. I think yeah. Marine Lord won't be able... 
It's the scout. It's the scout difference. Check where, where Marine Lord is. He's not at home with his scout vision right now. Yeah, he's he's actually now starting to mirror the other scout, but he's a, a health differential, right? So now if BC intercepts, he can kill you. Yeah. But luckily for him, BC wasn't looking at that. A few edge timings will be pretty similar, or, or he might see the scout, the, the, the villager pretty soon. He's coming fast, but the dock should go down fast, faster, right? And it just... Drop it right now. He needs to find the slot because it's a bit janky sometimes. It looks like you should be able to appear, but you might not uh, place, but you might not be able to. But now the scouts arrived, and, and this is a fight that you can't win as Marine Lord. You you have to back off from this. In fact, Beastie is going incredibly aggressive now because he sees he has the edge. He might even try to drop a dock right next to this one. Okay, some fortification here to let. Could he not drop one at the right? Why isn't he like? It feels like so easy to build a dock. No, he's going past it. I think he's just going to drop it right next to the edge here. Uh oh, uh oh, yeah, uh -oh. there it is. That villager is going there. The villager is oh, ahead. He oh, he wins the race. God. Tries to block it with the. What? But scout blocks it off. This is too much. What? He, he How got can he build on the scout? What the hell? But now he has to go back. I, so I think Beastie wanted to drop on the right side here, but if you check that terrain, I don't think he could drop a dock just to the east of Marine Lords. No, so he had to make tight. that run. And Marine Lord was calm. He stayed ahead. He has the advantage because he's already going to begin his build first as he's closer. Could he not build anything at the right side? No. Like, look, look it at it. Look at how tight it is. If you check next to, the, so, to this, uh, I think, like, I wouldn't be surprised if he can't at all here. But also, more important than that, BC saw that he had the edge because Marine Lord's scout was damaged mm -hmm. and they both had a villager. So mm -hmm. you just win that fight long term, right? Like, that's not a one Marine Lord can win. So he tried, I think, to go for a dock drop right next to Marine Lords, because then you just get arrow slits and you screw him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But the terrain wasn't there. But then just go to the right side, no? Yeah, it just feels too late, though, because of the tech up timings. Because then Marine Lord techs up to Feudal. Mm -hmm. The time it takes you to build, it, it's Roost. He already got his first fishing boat out. He can turn it into an archer ship and kill your villager. Ay, 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 ay. So Marine Lord. It felt like he was late, but still gets the full two pawns, has to be happy with this one. By the way, be security, behind all our excitement for the dog play, he actually is on the way to Castle Age wow. with Burgrave Palace. Wow, and this is what I was waiting to see. We saw the Abbasses. Don't focus on the water. Get on the land as quickly as possible. And this is going to be quick from both sides, not just the Burgrave, the reaction. Marine Lord is going for the Abbey of the Trinity. We have to remember these guys outside of dropping the, uh, dropping the docks didn't aggress at all. Uh, but... This is going to be tricky for Marino if he doesn't get proper scouting. Oh, he needs to. Okay, he, he okay. Gets oh, what am I saying? What am I saying? Yeah, you think he's gonna miss out on his scouting? He's like, Nili, please. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's coming in with the knight there as well, tries to arrest the gold a bit. And Marine Lord should actually get the advantage in relics. Can he maybe get up to four? I think so. I think it should be quite easy for him right now. He's already got a few knights in the field. Archers as well. Yeah, Relic counter two though. Maybe BC has two prelates. Yeah, he has the prelates in location. Maybe he can grab them straight away. But now that you see knights, you can't do that. You have mm. to be very contained until you have enough troops. And also keep in mind, this was naked, right? He only just dropped the blacksmiths. He hasn't even upgraded the men at arms yet. This is mm. going to delay the time for BC to move out to the map, while Marine Lord should move out straight away. And all he has to wait on is the production of the first monk. Oh, some archers trying to be annoying here. First monk, indeed, warrior monks there. Should be coming pretty damn soon. Now upgrades his knights as well. And that's quite some harassment. And that burger of Cal Palace rather wanted to be more aggressive. Yeah, this is kind of tough here. Like, you've got the product trying to heal, but he just doesn't heal well enough compared to the knight damage, able to just scratch him down. We are going to oh, see scout. the heavy maces being prioritized right now. But behind this, I'm curious to see what Marino is doing. He's actually going into crossbows. The correct play. Remember, he set up the archery range already, mm -hmm. and he got one or two archers out. And this is the natural counter. HRE, one of the downsides is they're very predictable. They're, they're comp. They want melee, even more so when they build the Burgrave. This could be a really long game. Both two pawns, yes. uncontested. Burgrave, though, not scaling that well in the long game, right? Relic count won't be that crazy. And Marino has to be happy with how well he is going to deny the relics away from HRE. Especially the way that BC had to play his base. One thing to keep in mind, a difference between these two, is that Marine Lord had a better layout of tree lines to create natural barriers, mm -hmm, wood walls. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You look at BC's side, look how open this northern side is. That's where Marine Lord came in from. Mm -hmm. So he guards this area, and a knock-on effect is he actually has influence over all of the relics on that north side. Yeah, right now just controlling everything. We have a run for the one at the bottom, and it feels like we're picking up the relic right yeah, next to this Olympian. one. he's an Olympian. Look at him go. He's like, I can do this early ahead of time. So only two prelates there, right? BC was keeping one at home, buff these people up. And keep in mind, every time he loses one of these because he went Burgrave, it's hard to replace because any time you build a prelate, it's 100 gold, and that means you're also not making a villager. Mm -hmm. Slows down your economy significantly, and three at the top there. 
Uh, is there an option to go second archer range here for Marine Lord? I think you yeah, I think you can do it here. I think you, you've got good enough wood to make a transition now, and your food should be decent. He's getting heavy on the gold. He needs that for knights anyway. And these knights are getting maximum impact. One of the issues with, with what BC has to do is you mass men-at-arms first, and men-at-arms are great in prolonged clashes with heavy knights. Mm -hmm. You just don't get it, right? Like, they don't let you do that. It's like they charge you, and then they run away. Yeah. The spearman, if you charge him, you're gonna find uh, a spear going through your eyes. It's not not fun. <laughs> and then you're stuck, not knowing yeah, where like, to go. Yeah, I can't get this out of my head. <laughs> up. Do I pull? Do I push? In your eye. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. They're pretty sick. And now let's take a look. The night transition nice won't happen. Like he'll, he'll get it still, but it's like slightly delayed. It's another villager going down. I mean, they're neck and neck right now. It's just, it's the map control I'm worried about. PC has done a good job of getting one relic, but I think Marine Lord should get the remaining two. And that means there's going to be four versus the one. And this is not double gold for the HRE. Oh, could get the oh, nice relic as well. Oh, gets it and gets out of there. Yeah, he even keeps all of the knights alive. He could even send one north, one south, and just wrap around in circles. And that's forcing BC to once again commit into prelates. I hope you build a monastery because this is starting to hurt. Aye, 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 aye. He has the monastery yeah, here good. to that, drop good. off some stuff, but it feels like it should be two relics for the HRE and three relics for the Roos player. Heading into a pretty walled up, stable mid game. Feels like Knight, Crossbowman, mm -hmm. and B Security. He can't address that by only going infantry. He needs to find a way of, of getting into the Lang's neck, I think, because you you know you can sneak them into the crossbow formation and they just eviscerate them. Mm -hmm. It's very difficult when you don't have this gold trickle, mm -hmm. and you're not going to have this gold trickle. Even from the one, you're only getting 80 gold. You're not the true HRE with the regnets, and I'm still very doubtful that he's going to get maybe more than two. He, he's probably going to get the one at home, but the rest are just going the way of Marine Lord. Yeah, try to go for the, for the left side, try to find something. Oh, an oh, overdrop here. Yeah, he'll fix the wall now with all the villagers. Spearmen will be committed onto the night, and the body blocks on the villagers even allows him to get it quickly. But Don't you can see he's rushing. Quick wall. Crossbows! They intercept. That's not been built. That's just going to be torched down. You're going to have to fall back here. Beastie is not ready for a fight. Uh oh, army a bit out of position. Knights even going wall. for the gate. I think he left could side. go in. Okay, it's going to be a whiff. Beastie, he's going in for his own raid, but this is the bigger one. Like This is going to idle all of the wood lines. Yeah, you only want food and gold, but you need more spearmen right now, and that does cost wood. No wood not come right now for Beastie Cutie. Spearmen, not the craziest raiding unit. Another lumber camp there, okay. Right. Yeah, we'll, we'll body block them. We'll create choke points with more lumber camps. Why not? Oh, I really like lumber camps next to each other, apparently. And yeah, maybe going for the dock, but obviously Ruth's not that affected by exactly, that. Exactly, like that. that's the frustration. Another sieve this works on, you just torch the dock, it's like, ha, you're not dropping your fish. It's the Ruth, they don't need to. They've got, I don't know, what is it, remote pickup? I, I, I just don't know. phone Amazon and they just come pick it up from my boat. We have to ask Riley how that's um, historically accurate. Yeah, I, I I, mean, you can't even argue they train the birds, right? That's That, that was a thing uh, in, in China, I think. On country. And how would the birds, like 40 fish, fly over there, drop off yeah, every yeah, time? You know about the, the, the fishing with the birds, right? Like, there's this fishermen that, that they train them to, to pick up the, bird, like the, the fish, and if they eat the fish, they beat them. What? Um, yeah, yeah, okay, enough animal abuse. We've already seen enough of the game. <laughs> Let's focus on this, because it's getting very important now. The horseman switch is coming out from BC. He needs to keep this wood coming in. Look how close he is to running out of wood every time. He's massing spears and horsemen. Although they're only 20 wood each, it adds up very quick. Mm -hmm. And all of his wood is on the front side. This is why I was talking about the idea of something like Mongols could work on this map, because it's so hard to defend head of your base when you start to lose control like this. Oh, this could be a big fight, obviously, in the Thanks. stealth forest here. Tough for B security to know what army he's actually it. facing. Yeah, he just can't dive onto the crossbows here because the rest of the army is just too close right now. Marine Lord is just proven to be a crafty bugger here. Ooh, that's a scary force. Why is there a boom ship from Marine Lord? He hasn't stuck on the dock. That must just be. Let's not focus on it. You know, it happens. Maybe misclick. Maybe he wanted to kill the infantry the at the left side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a possibility too. I love that he's cutting off reinforcements. BC, like he can't take a direct fight, so his only hope of getting back in this right now is stopping more troops from arriving. But there's already so many troops from Marine Lord in his base. But crossbow, yeah, a really nice unit, but against spearmen, horsemen, not really the craziest one. I think Marine Lord, he needs to add a different unit now as well. Goes for mass horsemen himself with the HP upgrade. The Langsneck are coming. Beastie is buying the required time. This is very important. If Marine Lord plays into these choke points, gets pushed back into an open field, you can get on top. It's very important that he uses these buildings to keep the Langsnake at bay, because remember, melee units, they can't fight 
in their full potential when you're fighting between buildings. Range yeah. units can, and Marine Lord is still heavily relying on crossbowmen. Marine Lord did a really good job splitting off one horseman away, is trying to see a bit what's happening. Is now raiding the top, is raiding the gold there, and well, that's mainly actually was intended as a scout. Look but at why the not raid the gold? Time. BC doesn't have wheelbarrow. Wow. This hurts. This really, really hurts. It's why the aggressor is favored. So many players don't get willpower. They don't have on either side. Also, Boy's Fortitude is now coming in for Marine Lord. So his horsemen are about to have the edge over the HRE. Oh, oh villagers, they need to run. Most of them will make it home, but Crossbowman still slaughtering. Marine. And that means no proper gold income right now for BC either. No, but he's got a few lands neck here. And you need to target them down as you retreat. Marine Lord is trying to start step back. But the crossbows shift to the back of the formation. Horsemen looking to block him out. And you might quickly lose the crossbows here. Needs to re-stabilize control over the fight. Lion's net count still at six here. They haven't even been targeted down yet. It looks like he could easily just be pushed fully out of the base. Wow, split formation here tries to go through. Some men at arms are trying to intercept, but not enough. He's trying to slow him down the retreat to kill more crossbows. Like everything he's throwing at this is to buy more time for the Lion's neck to get on top of the crossbows. And these staggered formations, Moringo is forced to do it. And every time he does it, he keeps more troops in the waiting arms of BCQ. Lion's neck are in. The stealth forest gets dangerous as well. Neither player can see anything here. There's no scouts. Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. BC has a scout to the south side. He sees everything. Oh, and now more barracks tries to get some men at arms in front of it. No, actually, spearmen and needs to retreat. This was a beautiful push off by BC. C'est la magnifique. Now he goes on the offensive and he has all these melee troops that can torch down buildings. So Marine Lord can only give over so much ground. Look at his army. Barely any crossbows, barely any archers. You don't want to throw melee at this, but you have no choice. Langsnecker is still alive for the time being. They're going to carve through you like you're a turkey right now. And even if Marine Lord holds here, Beastie now has full control of his base and the map again. Second wave of Langsnet coming in. This follow-up will clean up what is left, and Marine Lord needs to reset and come again, but he won't have time. Absolutely crazy. Be security very limited on wood, but that's not important. He goes full food and gold. Full production here. Now men at arms, horsemen, and now add some lances as well. He knows I have a timing here. I can push it because I'm in your production. He needs the Maganels. Marine Lord is switching into this now. It's a great read. Langsneck are glass cannons. And interestingly enough, BC has stopped making Langsneck. He says, oh, the crossbows are gone. Let me just turn on uh, my watch and oh, it's men at arms o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> well, loves those unit 18 on the field right now for him and this amount of resources he's thinking about swabia for good reason you get up to the swabification right that that whole boy's 42 logic don't care now i'm going to build horsemen in mass again that's going to counter out the siege that's going to counter out the remass of archers and crossbows everything marine lord is doing is going to be discounted he has to get the right read to go spears but every time he goes spears in this matchup bc is going to add in a new layer of lang's neck to clean you up look at that swabia as well between gold stone berries and woodland what what is this uh, it's the dream. The dream. Can I have my starting TC here? In future? Yeah. Yeah. That also produces a, a yeah, third of the cost. TC also <laughs> produce three times the villages. Thank you very much. Wall's going up. Doesn't complete it just yet, but he gets the initial foundation in place before the crossbows arrive. This is going to delay the timing. Beastie, remember, he's teching up. He doesn't want to commit just yet. Marine Lord seems to have sniffed this out. Instead of being on the defensive and turtling, he allows the raids to go in, and he goes back into the base. Sick. How, how did Marine Lord realize, wow, you just pushed me back fully, but I can actually attack? I think another player would have been way more scared than Marine Lord. There wasn't a true second layer from Beastie coming into that assault, right? Mm -hmm. It's like you pushed him back, you went, okay, now I'm going to retreat. So Marine Lord just reads it perfectly. He says, okay, there's just nothing else behind this. You, you must be doing some greedy elements at home. And wow, I mean, this is scraping the bottom of the barrel. When you see a ram and we're this late into the game against HRE, I say this late, it's only 20 minutes, but uh, what can you kill with this? With the emergency repairs, be always being a threat. Well, maybe he wants to trigger the emergency emergency repairs on some houses and maybe. then make a massive play for the Swabia? Maybe he just really hates Ark and Chapel and he's, <laughs> he's saying it's much better than mine work. Oh, keep going keep up there. Now. Yeah. I mean, the army will defend this. I, I think they can get in position. And the, what's going to happen is Marine Lord's probably going to be baited into attacking the villagers. And if he does, he gets wiped. So if you check back in the base, like the keep, yeah. Oh, yeah. He backs away. Oh, this yeah. is the right call. Like if you go in there, these lang neck and men at arms, whatever's there, wrap around the back and you get cleaned. BC still without any elite upgrades, right? So it's still Castle H Army versus Castle H Army. The only advantage that BC has that he can now heavily catch up with the villager count. Yeah, and you know, Marine Lord, 
he has still got some fuel in the tank, right? He's not out of this yet. Yes, yes, he is an ace behind, but he has a decent economy. The problem is the longer this goes on, the more BC recovers with a land economy and gets out ahead. Choke point also working for the advantage of Marine Lord, but the wall breaks straight away, wraps around onto the Maganel. That's going to be taken out. And sure, you've got these crossbows that are exchanging well, but behind this, more horsemen are on the way from Beastie. Lots of low HP, men at arms in the front here, another Springle trying to help from distance. I'm shocked that no one is building a tower there to get some more vision. A wooden fortress could have helped in so many engagements. When would you felt like you had time to bring a villager out to no man's land with these horsemen running back and forth across the field, right? It's, yeah. it's so difficult. I, I agree, it'll be great. Even maybe just a scout, because you can hide in the tree lines. It's so difficult to see them unless you have your own. Mm, also, like Springle in placement, then could have shot a bit more. Yeah. Scouts, it, it just feels like it could have died very easily. Indeed, a highly contested area. Swabia still printing away, but seems like Marino at least winning this fight. Yeah, the Lava Hotel is revitalizing BC's economy quite well on land. And also, that placement secured a new wood line, so this threat of running out of wood isn't there. He even secludes it. He says, wow. Now I'm playing two players, right? You can the HR in the north, the HR in the south. <laughs> Yeah, double town center setup there. At least it feels like it, but it actually it is four town center setup. Still two relics here. Now we go for the emergency repair on the house. Could trigger an attack to the bottom. Another ram attempt. Marino's coming in with traps. He realizes BC's not fully online yet. And there's a danger that he has to go full on land with food as well, as he's starting to drain these deep water fish. As this game goes on, you become more and more reliant. So you need to have that kind of pivot point, especially when you want to still go into premium units like horsemen, at least in the food department. Security first upgrade. Bin him. It's, it's the cannons. attack upgrade. Yeah, it's going cannons. Cannon well, placement yeah. here as well. Is it out of the keep? I, I mean, it's in the keep to the north, which doesn't. That's a tough area to break, regardless, right? Like, dog, you ain't got enough housing to go around the kingdom right now. I don't know if you need to arm people with cannons. All these houses on the south side. Look at his pop caps. He has to rebuild north. He mm. will be able to stabilize there, but my concern now is if you're a marine lord, do you not just push south? I think you should. Oh. By the way, one relic transferred into the keep there, so crazy range, crazy damage output there. If we were to push in this area and be security, look at his population. 126 out of... Oh, 110. 110. <laughs> 100. Just keep going down right this way because there's still more houses in the area. This is going to get tough real fast. Mm. He's even taking out the docks. Beast is going to run out of food. Oh, yeah. Where is he getting right now? He's tapping oh, the gold oh. dry. You don't want to be on berries in this situation. Mm. There's a very big risk that BC could just wave the white flag in the next two minutes. Only 400 gold there as well. Military count looking really good for the Ruse player. Now completely overwhelming. Remember, this is still Castle Age against the Imperial Age. But so good. BC Cutie, what does he have? Only now starting again with Men at Arms, but only two on the field right now. Starting to feel the strain, starting to feel the pressure, even going to lose the monasteries. So that little bit of gold trickle going to be gone. He even has to double down on gold on land here, but now he's starting to run out of wood. He has to pivot everything south side, and this is the value. Because you took in the main base, because the wood lines are more or less exhausted, mm -hmm. the only move for BC is to push everything south. Now so Marine Lord, he can just go. He can follow this. You could try to chase him, but right now you still lack the economy to get the army to fight him. Ooh, monastery goes down, and we also see the dock going down after emergency repair. This could potentially be a clear up, but massive hits on the economy. Economy. He's trying to hold for the moment. He even gets the outpost up, has a cannon emplacement in there. So that might be the redeeming factor for him. He'll have E-repairs to keep it alive. And keep in mind that Marine Lord has bunched a bunch of squishy boys in the backside that can be sniped. Ram is still clear to go in for the moment, though. Looks like Horsemen are starting to clean this up on the backside for Beastie. Marine Lord will have to reset and go again, but no doubt he's done a lot of damage. Oh, oh, if you look at the population, Beastie only 15 behind now. And all of a sudden, he's an imp. His opponent isn't. He's getting proper upgrades. He will hold this, but more raids are coming in. Yeah, keep in mind that he more or less eco-evened off that Palace of Swabia, and now mm. he's down again. So it's mm -hmm. deceptive. You think it's good, but it's really not for him. And also, Marino always has this trebuchet play behind him. He's now taking up high armory. He's going to be spamming out the mass siege, and he's even prepping for the military academy, because unlike Beastie, he has the economy to support additional production. This game is about to take a turn for the worse for any fans of the Beast. Oh, man. And then the question is, what is our army composition going to be for the rules? Mass siege makes a lot of sense. Are we mixing in Streltsy here? Because then yeah. we need another tech switch for the HRE. I think we see Streltsy, and I think BC has to go back to Langsneck to try and weave in. Maybe he needs to go Maganels. Like, either way, it's all gold, right? And what are we seeing on BC's side? How much gold does he have left? I feel like he's exhausted most of what he had. That vein's almost gone. North side isn't looking too bad, right? I think Still that's kind of saved, yeah, yeah. But this one's kind of on the front line, right? Mm, we so, just had a wooden fortress being built there. I'm not sure if that was stopped because the army was pushed away. This is too Fields traps now, right? It just dies. Mm -hmm. And how do you defend against that? Because one issue for Beastie, he's got a few horsemen, but he's going back to static. 
Mm, and still the monastery is still dead, right? Right yeah. now, it's three relics that are generating gold against only one. Tide Barnes is coming in. Yeah, Reno yeah. is setting himself up for the late game beautifully. But population getting closer and closer. And we always keep saying, the security arguably the best in the hyper late game. Yeah, but Marine Lord. Up there with him, right? The second one. <laughs> They're always one two, one two on each other's lists. And after this game, someone is going to be one two on the score. But I definitely feel even after this, you're seeing how close each of these games are. From mm -hmm. game one to game two, sure they're fast and there's a vicious end, but you feel like there's there's a plan in motion. And we're seeing it once again as we are reaching the late game. A late game that has come funnily fast. I feel like I say late game in these situations and look up and see 25 minutes. <laughs> Trey, uh, the trap in quite some danger here is easily going down and that means the keep is going up just slightly higher off the Great screen move. and more villages are going to go down. Marina suddenly being the one pushed back. It's really great what he's done here. He's pushing back into the base and Marine Lord's being forced to invest in walls. What you're seeing here is a no man's land develop. Think about how many games where one player has to wall and the other just gets the map. That's no longer the case. They are arguing back and forth and it means we are in for a very fun four legs that is not going to just end abruptly. <sighs> and then Siege Micro obviously will be important. Vision in the center, right? That's still the mess of Stealth Forest area. Will be quite tricky to get at proper fights here. It seems like Marine Lord dealing with all those raids. Then walling the whole map this will become a heavy fight through the center i'd love to see beast just smuggling out one or two lang snake with these spears each time because mm -hmm. when you reach in the eco you're seeing marine was like eh, i do not care right it's just spears they're mm -hmm. not going to kill you quick enough one lang snake gets yeah. in there it's like it's carving time boys Ooh, those villagers in some danger as well. Be secured with quite some nice raids, honestly. How many villagers is he killing? Only 20. Feels like more. On the other side, we have 66 skeletons. Yeah, but I mean, are they? Is it really that many? I mean, they were cheaper. Do we count them? Right, because he's got the power to swap. You're pumping, mm. so it's whoopty freaking do now. Mm. At the end of the day, we're still like two TCs versus four, right? Because Marino did go for the second TC to prep for the land. First time we're actually going for a sacred sites with all the prelates that we had, with all the yeah. warrior monks that we had. Could have been a bit earlier. First bombards are now coming in, and Siege Workshop's going down at the front. Reynolds going for Mass Horseman. You saw how many queued up there, so it looks like he's going to try to pull the story back into BC's base, right? Because right now it's Marino defend, BC goes deep, and BC loves his playstyle. It is what makes him so frustrating to deal with. I call him the King of Dry Arabia, especially because he always finds a way to reach that late game, and he runs Horseman on the flanks, and instead of doing something productive, you're just running around your own base doing nothing. Mm, that's so ugly to play him and it just it just feels so unfair because he's also holding in the center at the same time and he's just being so annoying here. By the way, this keep has the relic inside. Now jumping here with the horseman. I think could have waited for a bit more, but it's just too juicy. Yeah, you're gonna see him just wrap around now, just get himself a little freebie. Easy nice. siege out in the field. Pretty much unguarded. Love the TC coming up from Beastie. Emergency repairs is very efficient. Just allows you to keep repairing something that now costs stone. And of course, stone is going to dry up fast. Such a finite resource. Coverine being added as well. That keep going down dangerously the timing, low. The timing and is good. Watch this. Look at the, the TC build. I, I, this, this is going to be so tight. He needs to hit the e repairs. Oh, and there it is. what it a good move. Just in time. So it will stay alive. Belly. <laughs> well, still some more shots. How many traps do we have? We have none. It's only two bombards there for Marine Lord. I, it's, I, it's probably one, right? <laughs> remember. Ah, it's one, one. Yeah, yeah, remember, okay, okay, remember. Yeah, yeah. We like to get baited here. But it's the Strelzy I'm looking towards for Marine Lord. Archers are buying a, a lot of value here. Like, it's buying so much time for a, a more expensive transition. One of the biggest mistakes we see Roost players make is they go Imperial and they just start pumping Strelzy. It takes mm. too long and it's too expensive. Cheap things like archers, spearmen, horsemen, they're your stopgap. They allow you to get to this premium army, and it also gives you a front line so you're not trading the premium army. You're trading crap for probably good at your opponent. Are we over booming here? 134 villagers against 145 ah. with more production. Just go 200. Drop but, a key. But who, who's fighting then? <laughs> I, I mean, in that situation, you're like, maybe Beastie's winning because he can build the villagers again cheaper and faster, right? <laughs> Just, just I'd love to see the chat in game. Like, do you just want to have a villager war? Yeah, let's do that. <laughs> that's how friendships are being made. Yeah, beautiful. And, oh, this is beautiful. The reaction straight away. Marine Lord forces a cancel of the keep and now gets his own up because remember, as we claw deep in this game, gold is going to become the priority. Men at arms, potentially Lang's neck, even Siege on one side, and then of course Siege and Strelzy on the other. Diving in there, Bombard, not sure. The, oh, it's getting repaired. Nice move there. Horseman can't get there, but the, 
Overeed's gonna be gone. Does at least get that. So cheap spears thrown away to get rid of some of this annoying siege. The anti siege is really what Marine Lord is worried about more. But now we're seeing the transition out again out of Beastie. He sees all this cheap crap, all these spears, these archers. It's time for more Lang's deck. Archers finding lots of kills here, so we have to question, like, look at the result of Beastie. Absolutely at the limit, why he only has 22 men at arms. I'm, he can't take a heads up fight. I'm looking to see who's going to run out of wood first. I feel like longevity, I, I favor Marine Lord because he's, he's actually secured a lot of wood to his north side he hasn't touched yet. Mm -hmm, Beastie's mm -hmm. going to have to fight and scrap for anything he wants to get. Even this area is no longer secure. He's just moving out at the bottom of the map there as well. What is he moving we going? into? Is it Yo, stone? Oh, keeps. <laughs> keep outpost. On the gold. It's going to reach the gold, right? That, that's what he oh. wants to do. It's just all about denial and it's out of vision, barely. And I don't know if Marino really clocked what that move was yet because he's distracted by the front and center. BC once again, just distracting and drawing attention away from the real play. Mm, great armory spitting in tech, but those three oh, bombards. They're gone. There's no no way to get out of here. One's gonna go down, second one's gonna be sacrificed. A great maneuver again by Marine Lord, but after this, he needs to find a way of getting rid of this keep. He's only got two trebuchets, and E-Repairs can easily outdo that. Okay, we... Yeah, no more bombards, that's so tricky. Yeah. And you can't sit under this. And also there's extra armor on these keeps because he has a relic inside, so it takes even longer than it normally should. Oh, God, and that's the beauty of HRE and their great moves that they can go on with the relics. How many traps do we need to kill this? Four? I feel like four is a, a solid way of doing it. Three, maybe, but it's going to take you so long. You're, you're going to want to like grind your brain out your head and <laughs> flush it down the toilet. Like you won't, you won't want to remember that experience. How many kills does that castle have? Yeah, I think I witnessed like thirty. <laughs> It's like, you know, some moment like you ask the, the, the keeper at the bar, like, how many people you killed in your life? It's like, I stopped counting. Mm, okay. I no longer have a conscience. <laughs> Good evening, sir. Now, this keep, now that it's up, you see, like, his keep's kind of relegated. Like, what he wanted here was the gold. He at least gets a small, the small stack of stone to the side, I believe it was, but the, the gold is now out of reach, out of bounds. Marine Lord, he goes, <laughs> what did you think you were doing? I have 4K in the bank. This isn't going to kill me anytime soon. Not anytime soon, indeed. More bombards are now arriving. Horsemen are dying. Not even sure if this bombard is dying. Oh, no repair. But the keep is just so strong. You're diving with archers and strelty, by the way. That's not just archers anymore, so that does sting you. I mentioned he has a lot of gold in the bank, but at this stage in the game, 4K can just disappear fast. It just feels though, behind all this, Marino is constantly going for crazy late game he upgrades. Is. Yeah, and, well, BC Cutie, he doesn't even know. Hey, BC's going for crazy upgrades. Cannons everywhere, right? <laughs> it just feels like every time I'm looking across, there's another cannon being in place. Vision still limited here. Bombards a bit exposed. Horseman uh, diving. Uh, Keep goes down. Keeps gone. He could even have killed the Bombard straight away. He's finally done it. He breached it. And it's because he went up to the four trebuchets we talked about. Great move out of Marine Lord. Another thing. These are cheaper. High armory, right? It's not as straining for him. He's not going to run out of wood as quickly as Beastie will at this rate. Ooh, crazy moves here, Marine Lord. He's pushing in further. And you did you just tell me that he had 4k gold in the bank? Where's all that gone? It's only down to 1.5k now. I don't know if it's too soon to, to use this kind of pump, but it's a magic trick. It all disappears. Yes, that was a reference to what happened to him at the start of this tournament. But looking very different from that series. This is the Marine Lord we wanted to see, and we're seeing it in full force. Farm transition now coming out as he moves onto land. And, I mean, Beastie Q, he's got to start feeling the pressure. I feel like every time I'm checking, he's getting a little bit red, a little mm -hmm. bit more sweaty. Mm -hmm. I don't think Marine Lord could get much more red at this stage. He's in full <laughs> Maroon Lord mode. Oh. Yeah. Uh, oh, no, don't tell me those can squeeze in. Oh, oh. God. This is the worst situation. You have to pull back when you need wood most. Look at BC's income and look at the wood he's running out of. He's going to react quickly here. He even just sends the villagers back in. He says, no, 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 no. They're like, please, we're being killed. I don't care. Have you <laughs> met your quota for wood for the day? Oh, and another raid here. No vill more villagers around that area. <laughs> These walls do nothing anymore. Yeah, it's just all like, it, it looks a bit like Swiss cheese. Like, there's so many holes inside and the traps just moved over and going for the next key. I feel like we're just going for a hedge maze at this stage, right? It's like, oh, well, well I'll find my way around eventually. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The beautiful thing in Age of Empires 4 is you should click somewhere and the and AI they does find it, it. Yeah. <laughs> Easier than in real life. Those horsemen <laughs> will deal with the villagers. Where are we going right now? He's like, let me in. I hate being part of this empire. Can we join you? No, stay away. Keeps are going to go down. PC losing even more villagers here. I mean, luckily for him, HRE Le Shrug, but just look at the bottom there. 123 workers gone. Sick, and PC is still producing just to get some more meat shield there, which are villagers for him. 
We now see Chemistry coming in, Bomber in placement for Marine Lord as well. <laughs> but Beastie Cutie, he only now gets the first food upgrade. And he now only gets Wheelbarrow. Uh, mm. It makes sense if you think mm. about it. My villagers are dying, they're getting produced, they need to run back to the new <laughs> line, right? That's a lot of inefficiency. Mangle shot behind, Strelzy somewhat exposed. Can he micro against it? He needs to move away right now. Mm. Nice dodge. Loses like one in the end there. Cleans up the front line. Sure, it's going to be exchanged. Somewhat in favor of Beastie, but as long as he gets the Strelzy out, Marine Lord is happy about this. Goes back to his production point. Three straps still firing away. And no emergency repair here, KP. I mean, I feel like we're, we're looking at Cold War era Berlin, right? The divide down the center. This is the, the center that no one's allowed to pass through. No man's land right now. And just feels like a never-ending slog here. But you know eventually it's going to stop. Because stone will not last forever. And these keeps no longer sustain for Beastie. Actually, funnily enough, they still have crazy amounts of stone here. They so do. they can add keeps, but this but keep forever. is falling. Yeah. And with it, the relic income. The, 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 the tough part for me is like Beastie doesn't have the ability to kill keeps anywhere near the, as quickly as Marine Lord. And Marine Lord's been efficient about it. You know, Beastie's spending a thousand resources every time he wants to bombard. Mm -hmm. You're spending less per trebuchet and even less because of the high armory discount. How many traps did we already see falling by those traps? It feels like. Four traps and the four keeps are already down. Now yeah. going for the fifth one at the bottom. I mean, I really want to see like kill counts on units to see how mm -hmm. they're doing, right? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, Bravo 6 squad, Trebuchet squad, how did you do today? <laughs> yeah, we took a few skulls and oh, some more skulls going to be playing in the center. The Stealth Forest is kind of becoming a nuisance for BC. If we check his vision, I'm not sure if he fully sees in this area anymore. Yeah, it, it's just a blind slog. So he know, never knows exactly what he's running into. But oh Marine Lord on the other side, I believe he has full vision over this area still. Yeah, and that's why you see Beastie build an outpost just north of here to re-maintain vision. But it's, is it really going up? They're going to go up and then instantly down. Yeah, because we already have the traps here. No emplacements can be put. And this is going to be a nice push. Yeah. No emplacements on this tower. Relic. Still not taken, and villagers are going to die behind this. They just have to run back to nothing because there's no resources at home. You burn it all already. And you know, these outposts that are giving you temporary vision, they're lasting about as long as what my pro career will probably be. <laughs> I'd have one game and say, I'm not made for this, I'm retiring. Oh, 150 villagers for Beastie Cutie now. Still, tries to go into stone walls, tries to go for the heavy, heavy repair, repair for the repair, bomber. Repair, 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 repair. Just, just keep going. We're burning the resource we need most and are running out of. It's wood, but it's fine. He'll hold for the moment, but the, the problem is that. You can see the ground shift. Keep in mind where we were about five minutes ago. Mm -hmm. Marine Lord is slowly pushing BC into a box. Absolutely crazy. And he can, he just needs to push the areas where there's the wood, right? Because with security, he's like running out of area. area. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, like this area indeed. Perfect place to be. And Beastie can't send troops over there because there's a Congo line of death into the waiting arms of Marine Lord's main army. Once again, gaining ground. These Streltsy, no, no bounds. Just nine of them. But that's good enough to always keep Beastie screaming 999 nine, nine himself. <laughs> uh, now the thing is, Arch has overextended a bit but too far. Exchange. The villagers have to go all the way back to base. So, like, even if you lose Streltsy now, I think you're kind of the shrug to it, right? It's, it's annoying to replace them, but you've gained map control. BC is now down to, what, a third of the map? Feels like it, right? And the pawns obviously limiting your way to move as well. More units are coming in. Mangalore trying to find some kills here, but beautiful micro. How is Marino so good every single time microing? Don't say that too loud. His head will get bigger, but it'll get bigger for good reason. This How guy, is Marino so good every he's time? He's incredible. Microing. He's incredible. Not just a micro at macro, the way he balances his economy and moves around, the way that he read what BC wanted to do around stone ahead of time, around wood ahead of time, and beat him to the punchline. Now, just look at this. HRE don't even have all their upgrades. You don't say that often. Usually, HRE the one bumping it, especially when I say on the other side, Marino's pretty much got everything gold ticked. Absolutely crazy how good the macro of Marino was, but he arrived in privilege simply with such a good economy and no real pressure mm -hmm. by B-Security because he couldn't go for seat. I that Marino this... could set himself up for the late game. It's basically the moment to reach him. And th th this this could just be game at this moment. Like, BC has nothing really to fall behind. He's got his farms on the front side. The keeps aren't defending that. He's losing south side, which means he's losing wood. You know, so far, what's kept in this game is horsemen and spears. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have the wood for that anymore. And if you start losing these farms, <laughs> they cost wood as well. So where are you getting all of this? Absolute the limit. And one the, raid the, the away from boy. the GG, potentially, here. He is still getting wood which is beautiful for BC Curie. Now spams in here, but we just said like Ruse with their Streltsy and 70 more in the queue, 43 more oh, horsemen in the queue. He's setting himself up. So like, how do you even kill this army? He's getting ready to chug a chug a choo-choo line over the finish line, at least to put him on match point. And it's hard to see a way BC is going to be able to buff this back. The best thing you can do is march in and trade out some siege, but this keep drop restricting him even further. And if just one horseman peers 
north side, Beastie will be out of this game. Even if he gets the wood, though, keep in mind, Marine Lord on the left side, just his oh, behind his own walls, he has his own wood. He can outlast mm -hmm. this. Yeah, uh, even if he's getting pushed back, he can continue oh, for such a long time. And what the big raids are coming in, in here, all the villagers are getting killed, pushed through the center, feels pretty even. It, uh, Marine Lord needs to realize that the left hand side is so crucial. I, I think Beastie's going to realize that wood is not going to be accessible anymore. You saw the Wind of Fortress drop. I think there's a keep drop up there as well. Marine Lord is just fully restricted him. And it's just knocking at his door. He's going to have to come for these tree lines soon. And at that point, he's going to be gone. It looks like that is enough. A little shake of the head. He says that's going to be it. a long burn up, but one that will put Marine Lord ahead as he takes game three. Wow, what a draining game. And what a cut into confidence of PCQ there as well, right? Considers himself to be the best one if we go to the late game. But head too big of a disadvantage going into the late game. Considers himself to be one of the best of HRE, if not the best. I talked to him a little mm -hmm. about what his signature sieve was. He's like, I still think it's HRE. Mm -hmm. And he historically loves HRE in this map. Even if Roost was available, he'd go HRE when other people were going Roost on four legs. When other people were looking towards the Chinese, he's still shaking his head. It's always been HRE for him. So this, this is one of those games where maybe it smashes your confidence a little. You need to shake it off. You need to reset. You get to this stage where Marine Laws on match point. You can't think about it. You say, one more game, just one more game, and then one more game. But where that gets difficult is the drafting element. You mm -hmm. still have to be aware there's a fifth game, but you can't fixate upon the fact that this could end soon. And Marine Lord obviously still has HRE, and we still have Maddie there. So yes. one of the craziest sifts, still an option for our Frenchman. And well, our Frenchman's got to be feeling confident, and we're going to go check in on him. We had a chance to interview him, and we'll see how confident he was coming into this series. My nickname is Marine Lord. I'm from France and I'm 27 years old. I play pretty much all day long. I do my best to find like good practice partner and make sure I have the best chance coming up. Just play not like 16 hours a day, right? Not too much, but 12 hours a day, I think, is a lot, but that's what I have to do to make sure I win. I don't really have an opinion about my group. I think it's pretty much even with everyone, so I think if you just play well, you're gonna win, and if you don't play well, you're gonna lose, so playing well will make me go first in my group. In playoff will be for sure pretty hard. Every player is good here and top 8 is even better obviously. Best of 5 it's not like bad obviously but it's still like only 3 games and you're out. So it can go very quick. So like I don't know like you just have to play your best every day in this format. And for sure it's the first time I play in a castle but I'm very used to offline events. It's been a while though because obviously with COVID we don't play as much offline, but now it just feels like an offline event in a very beautiful place. Devon Slim, because of his face. <laughs> his face is very scary. Not because of his gameplay, he's pretty bad. <laughs> obviously the last seed players are not as good on paper, so technically you are more confident against them, but I know like everyone is trying very hard. Even if they are lower seed, I will prepare for them and I will uh, make sure I I win cleanly. First time in a castle, but you wouldn't think of how comfortable he was with all those castles in that game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, putting them everywhere. And at the moment he saw one of Beasties, just destroyed them. So many traps there. Emergency repair, couldn't even stop him. Also did a nice job of constantly sniping those bomber cannons over and over again. Yeah, it's nice to see the French Maginot line working, as in he's the Frenchman. It's a historical classic for them, and it, it just comes out ahead for him. I, I love the pivot in Trebs, like the patience and just not rush Imperial. I think in older patches, getting Imperial is like, go, just get as fast as possible, win the game. Now it's kind of a bait, right? It almost feels like if you do it, the person goes, you spent how much on that? <laughs> okay, let's attack. Time to go kill you. And it's crazy because you, you think you're like you're enabled because of the nature of, of water maps. You get it so much quicker. We have to remember like Imperial Age came in and what? 20, 22 minutes, something like that. Mm -hmm. Incredibly early. Yeah, but still, like, Marine Lord had so much Castle Age army left, right? And it took quite some time for BCQD to then take the fight with the upgrades. The first one was really next to his Palace of Swabia, where he cleared everything, kind of stabilized. But behind this, the beautiful setup for Marine Lord, just like his long Castle Age aggression put him so far ahead. Yeah, and now, well, we have to look forward to potential aggression here, right? What's left? Mediterranean, Prairie. BC had to go to some of those home maps, and Priory is a very aggressive map. And what I'm seeing is Mongols still available, and I think that's exactly why Marine Lord has been holding this French pick this whole time. Mm -hmm. Mongols against French, obviously tricky tower rush. Like basically, th this hasn't changed that much, right? Basically, since like November, December of last year, we constantly had like tower rush and spearmen coming in. 
Yeah, and, and the, the comparative to think about here is French, they have five wins on Prairie out of eight picks. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Mongols, that start off strong with Mr. Flexing with the Magadai build against Sword of, mm -hmm. that's the only one they have. They have three losses after that. So it, if that matchup happens, don't think Mongols are, are, are king here. Unless BC's got some miracle in mind, because the French are, at least by stat standards, the favorites. Okay, well, that will be certainly interesting to see how it plays out. Obviously, BC Cutie, not typically the one that we think of, if we hear Tower Rush, right? It's more like, okay, I will try no. to play second to CD, I will try to play more de uh, defensively, we'll try to play the super long game. But Mongols, if they get into this matchup, he will have to play it. I, I'm, I, I'm going to have to combat. Mongols, Tower he's done his fair share. Okay, <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> like, I think I've talked to Beast. I think there's this. Maybe really... I only tune in after 45 minutes every Beast. Yeah, game. You, just check it, you just check his like, Twitch channel, you see it's 50 minutes long. What a snooze fest. And you just click off of it, come on to like mine and see I'm losing in 10 minutes, right? Mm -hmm. It's much funner that way. But it's the, the thing I've talked to Beast in, there's this really inaccurate picture that's painted of him that he's just this guy that ruins the game and goes late and you know everyone else gets a stage and they're like i'm not enjoying this anymore and pcs are like here they are right suffer that is one face of beastie mm -hmm. but the other one is if you want that late game if you want that greed if you want it too much okay i'm just gonna all in here i'm gonna end the game now i can see you want that i'm not gonna let you have it which fits the theme all he's trying to do is deprive you of whatever you want, your happiness. So don't be surprised. <laughs> this is painting a mean picture, but it's it's a smart strategy, right? Like it allows you to more easily tilt your opponent. It allows you to more easily play those low percentile chances because you're like, I'm still screwing with him. I'm still annoying him. And it's why I wouldn't be surprised if we see like a 15 minute tower rush down by Beastie to end the game. Not wait 15 minutes, but end the game by 15 minutes. Mm -hmm. Oh, B security also like, really good in scouting. Like what is he doing? He's riding on Discord. Mm, hey, the Muslim mm. here having problems against Marine Lord. Mm. And he's like, hey, what uh, should I do? And the Muslim like reads it, but doesn't, doesn't answer. <laughs> no, no, the Muslim would happily answer as much as possible. Like, let me tell you how to beat that smug son of. Uh, uh, no, nah, it's it's um it's probably that he's got some ways keeping notes in the Discord, right? Um, or maybe they're just talking to each other. No. Marine Lord just randomly DMs him out, and he's like, <laughs> Did you just see <laughs> this game? game free? You think you can win HRE? <laughs> you think Rus are not MVP? No, no, no. No. And now he unlearned how ears work. <laughs> this is very hard, man. I mean, do you really need ears? Is this my left ear? <laughs> That's my first thing I know. I saw one of the players uh, in day one, like he got on stage. It's actually magic. It's like, put his headphone and instantly came out. It's like, well, I hope he knows how to at least do headphones because I don't know if he's going to know how to do AO4. Of course, Magic turned up and done phenomenally well. So mm. maybe that's the trick. If he starts failing to put his headphones in, that means he's going to win. That's how it works? I think so. Okay. Learned it, something today. Maybe what that is is like, I will try to look stupid to Beastie, mm -hmm. but I know exactly what I'm doing. And then Beastie underestimates him. I'm not sure if Beastie looks over there right now. Yeah, he's too busy looking at the ha 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 message he got on Discord, right? No, he's just so focused and... Marine Lord probably typing to the Muslim. Did you just see <laughs> Rose game? Did you see what I do? You could have made finals if you didn't beat me, mm. but I stopped you. Hey, yeah. that, that's the tough part, right? Like, um, I remember Marine Lord after that, that magic series, a, he, got a, he got a lot of smack talk his way. Mm -hmm. And part of it was the frustration the players like, you ruined the brackets. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah. you may have just screwed someone who could make it deeper by doing this. And, well, we are gonna see Delhi versus French. So this this has to be Prairie. This this is the move. I like it out of Beastie. I don't think you go Mongols here. I don't yeah. think you can. And then it's Mongols against HRE, most likely. Quite possibly, yeah. And then On maybe, maybe he just goes land. He just rushes land because the mm -hmm. HRE can be incredibly greedy. Mm -hmm. uh, it's tough though, right? Because they can still build uh, men arms, and whoopsie daisy. But uh, he's got something in mind, right? He he picked Medi. It is his map, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This is the correct way, though. I think if you go Mongols, like you're just the stats are against it, and I think the play styles are against it. And the then you have nothing out. left on Medi, right? Like you can't play Delhi on Me Mediterranean. Yeah, there's no way around that. So Delhi against French, the Frenchman, obviously his potentially favorite civilization. Expecting lots of knights, archers, and Delhi has to open with spearmen, then try to contest the sacred sites. Yeah. But typically, it becomes tricky once like two, three archers are out. You need to go for either horsemen 
that horseman typically to deal with those archers. But the tough part about the French in going archers is like if you don't have full map control, you're going to run out of wood, so you, you're going to be burnt. You know what? These guys ain't burnt. We ain't done yet. These are the best of fives, folks. Let's hop into Prairie. Marine Lord on match point, but BC not giving up. It's throwing a curveball. Ooh, French are 5-0 on Prairie. That's what I was saying. Like they, they have five of the eight total wins. That's mm -hmm. nuts. So Thanks to Lucifron. No, only one. Only one. It's, it's spread, spread out. out. There's yeah, a few yeah, different yeah, players. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, Lucifron yeah. had one. Mr. Like, you know, I think... He, I don't think he's played French here. He's the only person to get a Mongol win. <laughs> the one mm. three losses for them. But that's why I like the BC just didn't do it. It looks like it just doesn't work. And another cool thing to think about here is, you know, He's going to get a decent amount of food at home. He doesn't need to necessarily go out into riskier resources early on before he has a critical mass of horsemen. Once he does, he can easily take on these knights. And that's why I love Marine Lord. His pivot is going to be to go for a second scout early on. There's about 40 sheep on Prairie. If you can get two thirds of that, it's going to inflate your ability to push knights or maybe even horsemen if you have to switch into the summer cheap. But be security simply because he can go for all those villagers next to the berries. He doesn't need to go to the town center. He doesn't need to drop off. So not unlikely that this scout being out for so long could pick up 15 himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the nice thing, right? Like berries are just so good. You get the extra 30% uh, gathering rate as well as inflate them so they last longer. And, and typically, like some of these spawns on Prairie, you just get very generous clusters of berries next to each other. Hmm. This is like a spit in the face though, I'm not gonna lie. Like, he hasn't got any good follow-up berry at all. Meanwhile, Marine Lord is just flaunting berries in front of his base, like I could have them if I really wanted them. <laughs> Marine Lord now runs over the area that Beastie just scouted, so that top scout won't find a single sheep anymore. Yeah, but we'll see. Okay, lots of villagers on berries. No big surprise there, though. Mm -hmm. So I want to see what Beastie's opening is going to be. I'm kind of expecting some sort of blacksmith play. Maybe you just go horsemen to start with, blacksmiths. Mm. Usually French players, are, they're always going to have their school cavalry, so they're going to be instantly into knights. Mm -hmm. But then the most typical follow-up is the archer range, right? So spearmen come last, which means your horsemen should be counted last. Mm -hmm. I've seen Beastie play a lot of double blacksmith, simply to get to that crazy power spike, get wild in Feudal Age, and once he reaches Castle Age, can go for the double up instant upgrades as well. Something I'm curious to see if Beastie does, especially with so much sheep. I wonder if he was paying attention to the Puppy Paul Lucifron game on Dry Arabia, mm -hmm. where Puppy Paul just came over the top and went for a very quick Castle Age's Delhi and then took map control. So maybe he just plays a very condensed start. It's mm -hmm. not about sucking in those sacred site golds. It's just, you stay at home and you go for class castle and then take over the map. School of Cavalry? A bit in a weird position, right? It's closer to the gold. Typically we see it towards the opponent. Like the rule of thumb is two tiles away, but I yeah. would have expected it more exactly where Mapu just showed it. I, I guess it's because he wants the person on wood. I, I don't think he started researching into the wheelbarrow yet. Mm -hmm. Right, so he, he's trying to optimize just to get the correct amount for wheelbarrow and then get the optimum timing for the night after that. Most players are aiming for School of Cavalry to complete around the same time as wheelbarrow, so mm -hmm. you need to get on, on course for that. And hold the front door! But wheelbarrow? Tower of Victory! We go with Tower of the Dub. BC's like, well, Ooh. I need a win. It's in the name. Let's do it. Ooh! I've been wanting this so badly. I've been wanting it for, for so long. It even got buffed now. Mm -hmm. It has uh, well, Delhi Wi-Fi, right? You know, it affects <laughs> yeah, all yeah, the buildings yeah. in the influence of the mosques. It's not just this annoying finicky thing that you have to run people past anymore. This, this, is, this could be a great play and maybe unexpected. Marino is on the left side of the base. He built it on the right side. And what's the most logical thing French players do? They run in with their scouts and they poke the gold villages so knights can follow up. So mm -hmm. he might not even see this. Oh, could be tricky here for Marine. It could be a bit caught off guard because then Hulage armies clashing against each other. It's not that pretty for a French player anymore. Mm -hmm. And he builds the racks here. He's like, yep, this is what I'm doing. Uh, you, I, I forfeit control to you, Marine Lord. I'm going to build spears and defend. Mm -hmm. you, well done. You've done a great job here. But wait, what about that Tower of Victory? You still don't see. No, you still don't see it. Nice scouting on the minimap. We just saw it, right? Oh. Saw like 85% of the map there. Be security. Another thing I really love from Reynold in this spawn is if you look, he's got ball behind his base, so he can play pocket ecos very safe and draw attention to the mid map and still get those inflated rates. That's going to be something to watch out for in about the next five, six minutes. Okay, Tower of Victory now scouted. So he finally sees it. Now, what's the Marine Lord's reaction going to be? Where exactly is that boar? It, it's oh, so that it's down. Really... Okay, okay. And can go to the deer afterwards exactly. if you wanted to. There's gold here, there's a decent amount of wood. Like, this okay. is a great area to play in towards. Mm -hmm. And the benefit is it plays further away from sacred sites where BC wants to situate himself. 
potential spot for a second town center there if we feel like okay we control the sacred site in a reasonable way i think it's i feel like it's going to be difficult to get that second tc with this configuration from beastie mm -hmm. unless bc completely chokes on a big fight right like he loses the whole army and they're like i'm so far ahead i'm gonna get economy yeah and that could be a way to get ahead there if you feel like okay i still can't finish the game in fuel age and we are expecting massive fuel age army though I mean, it, double mosque here like can you think of two civs that are willing to play long feud or more not really right now old meta maybe rules trying to go for four archer rangers and try to finish it there but delhi tower victory like they, they know that their army is crazy now May, maybe ottomans, ottomans in some, be, yeah. some form like yeah. ottomans would be the other one i was about to mm -hmm. say yeah mm -hmm. i'd say even you know roost kind of falling down the list in my eyes i think yeah, english yeah, even almost want to stay there longer but these are two of the highest ones that are willing now to do now arms rediscovered yeah <laughs> It's like, oh, we forgot these things existed. They're pretty mm. busted. Especially it's with crazy, all the gold right? spawns now. And you know, someone I'm, I'm curious towards, like, is if we do go into Castle Age, I actually think this is so much better for Delhi because one of the issues Delhi had in the past is that they, you know, they went for this Dome of Faith build and then compound the defenders to make sense because home blades is cool, but you don't get as much value. If you do Tower Victory, you get home blades and then you also get the attack speed buffer on top. We could see a men arms play if this game goes late enough. Okay, so those three attack coming in a bit With more often. 20%, yeah, it's it, it adds up in a fight. It, you know, it's still hard to beat out mass knights, but oh, the, the question mark is whether you get to mass knights if you're that stage marine lord. But right now he's hitting the timings. Nice raid on both sides. Marine lord is just pulling nice. easy left to right. He only has five spearmen. And you instantly see him queue up more because of this. Oh, two archers are in the field. Instantly running over there. No protection at all. Obviously, Beastie doesn't even have a horseman trying to intercept. <laughs> now the first one, the queue only. As I was say, like, what are you going to kill him with? The scout? Yeah, that's going to take a while. <laughs> so, yeah, he will at least stop pumping the horseman. But delicate balance here. If we check on the Beastie's TC, how many sheep did he get? This is going to become very important. He is safe for a long time. Yeah. The berries aren't going to last forever. And as we already highlighted, there's no additional berries near his base. Ay, ay, ay. So far away indeed. And as we pointed out earlier, Marine Lord, like, he has the aggression here he it's so easy for him to go to the bottom and that would be super far away from beastie who obviously has no chance of contesting the sacred site for multiple minutes yeah and sanctity is coming through soon so beastie maybe wants to make a move he just needs to hit that timing but second Lord, stable yeah. set of second archery i was about to say Ooh. i love this balance you can already see the effect on his comp it's 50 50 archers and knights mass knights can actually do what he needs really i, I think i think it's a good play because he just the whole idea is like you're predictably going to go mass archers, and Delhi should want to predictably go mass horsemen. Mm -hmm. If you have enough knights, you just keep body blocking them in the fight. And the archers are the premium unit to peel the Delhi because you have the counter to the spears, but then you also have the counter to the scholars. Think how many times we see melee mosh pits and scholars are there just like, you know, they're vibing on the backside like, woo, I'm just having a good time. No one can hurt me. But he's not producing a single knight right now. Now he has one in the queue. I think he needs eight on gold to have like a stable and the school of cavalry working. So like he needs to adjust to the double stable play. He could even inflate his numbers with a few horsemen as well. Looks like he's going to actually catch out the double blacksmith play from Beastie and idle a lot of villages in the process. Great read. And Marine Lord just circling the base like a shark, true to his banner. Ooh, next to the town center, though, Spearman dies. Villager right. have to be pushed away. Just more villagers idling, right? That, that's just his goal. Like, how much can I get out of this? He's going to lose one of the scouts. Remember, he still has a secondary one here, though. But now we're going to see the move out towards the sacred sites. The reason BC wasn't able to defend well here, he went off to the Knights. center. Knights again in the wood line. Oh, God. But this is the thing. Look at the center of the map. This is big as well. BC, he went for the sacred site. The Spearman aren't at home. Marine Lord, I think he scouted this out, and that's why he keeps diving in. He's like, where, where are you right now? If you're not going to defend, I'm going to do what French do best. And it's still not fully walled in. Those knights can get oh, in. Boy. It's only three spearmen. I mean, if he snipes the south side, I don't think it completes fast enough. It's going to be like a quick half wall. Instead, he has to peel oh! back, and that's just open. He says, okay, exit through the north side. We need to get out of here. Oh, sacred side will be neutralized. The raids at the top still continuing potentially here, and he will snipe this one, but the counterattack. Yeah, a small counterattack, though. That, that's the issue for him. Marine Lord now leading by five villages. BC's not inflating his eco through sacred side control that much. He still has the center at the moment. It is being decapped, and the scholar being lost here. Every time you lose a scholar with this build, it hurts. You're not getting them cheaper. Yes, you're getting them faster, but the Dome of Faith made you only pay 90 gold. Instead, BC's paying 150. Marine Lord was just floating 700 wood, just lost all of it. What is he building? Did he just drop like double barracks or yeah, something? Yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. Double archery, uh, archery and then blacksmith. Blacksmith, yeah, yeah. okay. So uh, he needs to get more people on goal because the blacksmith upgrade is going to be pricey and he's already trying to push more knights. This is probably going to be piercing upgrade because by the time it completes, you're going to have maybe 15 to 18 archers, which is the point where it starts to really return value. 
10 minutes in, how much sacred side gold did we get? Um, 50? Uh, like Something like that? maybe. Uh -huh. Not much. I, I, I think it took a while to decap the sacred side after initially got grabbed, so mm -hmm. maybe like 150 at least. But you see, he has to go left side, and then this feels bad. Just look at the layout of the sacred side. These two on the right side are close together, and yet he can't go for it. And that's bad, because you're up against knights, right? So you're not going to outmaneuver them mm -hmm. at any stage. Finds the villager kill here. Knights uh, moving back, trust, trying to test the water chivalry coming in pretty soon. And the attack for the archers still poking here. Beastie, his setup, like the gold, the wood next to each other. He needs to move to the second wood. Where is he going? <laughs> This I, one, I, uh, that's, the, that's the dream for a knight. Yeah, that, the tough part is I'm just looking at the layout. It's like, there's no direction you really want to go in. Maybe you just move to the, the central sacred site if you're strong enough. But I, I just don't think BC is strong enough to take a direct fight right now. No, not at all. Like, this, this is such a tiny army. The, he would easily lose that fight. And it's not even close. Especially with the shiver just kicking in. And it just takes so much time for him to get back in position and double punish these knights. I, I just think by the time they clash again, they're going to be pretty much full health. And BC is still going to feel slightly behind. He, he needs the next step in the plan. I, I'm i wondering, you know, do you try some sort of weird like pro scouts play just to get enough food to get you later on the game? I still would love to see him sneak castle, but Marine Lord is doing a phenomenal job of forcing him to reinvest everything into feudal. Oh, another prelate goes down. This one is exposed. Not the biggest protection here. One spearman, one archer. The boogaloo back to base was quick enough. Scholar will get out, but you're just not doing anything in this. You're not maintaining more. BC does at least get one sacred site on the left side. And one issue from Marine Lord that is a typical issue whenever you see mass archers, you don't have a way of breaching these power staples. So BC is getting good gold trickle, and that will last a long time. <sighs> Marine Lord realizes, okay, we are fighting for the center this area and moves towards it with his villagers goes for the front with the wood line this one is still getting raided but obviously one knight easily uh, scares those away yeah. this is like in eyesight so whenever he it. sees okay this is a big fight he can even pull some villagers build a tower next to because it. he keeps having to go to the south side of his base to defend mm -hmm. like imagine if he just goes on the gold here as well it's just it's nicely condensed and it keeps you closer to your army when they're being aggressive i just i love this we talked about the the macroeconomics of like you know if you have map control why are you not on board why are you not on div like the mongols mm -hmm. same with the french you know Keep your oh, only three horsemen just close, and this horseman count is demoralizing to look at right now. If you're beastie fans, oh god, the archers can just work away here. Knights defending this one as well, and this knight could probably clean up most of the horsemen. This is the issue. Like you should be able to kill him that stage. You should outmass him. It's just not good enough. And. This one's going to be a pushback again. Beastie just forced to mass even more spearmen. One big limitation is this wood, so he can't even surg into archers as quickly and cleanly as he want. Speaking of those archers, they're just picking apart the spears. Looks like they moved the wrong side of the tree line. The knights wrap around. They're going to reconvene into the fight, but the archers are now on the front line. So Beastie getting decent value out of this. Needs to be careful with the scholars. Knights are going to chase him down. The body blocks come in, and he's going to take out the premium 150 gold healers. Oh boy, bad archers are pretty exposed at the other side as well. Military-wise, pretty Pretty damn even. It's just, I think Marine Lord is getting a little bit better out of this. Like, you know, he's sniping a scholar here and there. He's slowing down BC's pace. And this is the advantage of having heavy amounts of cavalry. You become a body blocking unit. You become a reactionary unit. You shift through your squishy underside archers and block any flank attack. And we'll see those archers going again. They're going to target down the spears. They have to. Marine Lord with a very heavy commitment and possibly a rough one for him. Archers are going to be exposed. The last of spearmen do get cleaned up. So Knight should reign supreme in this fight. But you're right next to BC's base and he has more spears coming. Oh man, military wise, this was so much closer uh, when it comes to the numbers, but reinforcements didn't really get there. <laughs> he needs to combine his armies and then take another fight. This next fight will be way tougher for Beastie. Yeah, yeah I mean, that, that, those were the trainees, right? Oh, the archers, there are no spearmen here. Knights are here. Uh, he can get inside the wall if he's quick, but he hasn't oh! rewarded it fully. Instead, the archers just had to run for the high hills. Scholars shift to the back once again. Dead. Another fight for Marine Lord, and this is starting to get worrisome for Beastie. Oh boy, where is Horseman? He's trying to raid. He's going at the left-hand side, but what is he trying to find? He, BC has slow eco right now. He pulled all the way to the east side to go on berries. That's another risk for him in the future. But like, this is getting incredibly dangerous. BC is gambling that this never gets spotted because if it does, he's dead. Heavily behind him, villagers. I think he even slipped up in macro a bit. Look at how exposed he is as well. Everything is exposed. This is the weaknesses on Prairie. This is why the French have five of the eight wins on this map. They're able to freely just dominate the mid map. And one night will reveal it. Marine Lord once again forces BC into full retreat. And sure, you've got Wheelbarrow, but he's got a lot of pain coming your way. Oh boy, the pain is real. And that low HP knight found the woodline. So many villagers are going to die. And now it's looking really. 
really dying for BCQ. They could all be dead. I, I think they got tech stars, right? It kind of feels like maybe, but it, it, it's yeah. just not enough, though. There's just too many archers, too many knights. He's in the base again. You've got some spearmen and archers to hold, but just look at that eco difference. Now 12 up for Marine Lord. Sure, Beastie has one sacred site, but that's not the only weakness. We mentioned the berry patch on the east side. He's now moved wood lines down there, and Marine Lord is wrapping towards it. Oh god, and like Marine Lord, he just learned, okay, if I split one night off, he will find something and then I can raid some more. I wouldn't be surprised if he continues with that. Just split off one night, indeed, that's what we are seeing here. Beautiful play. Magnificent. You know, he lacks scouts. He's like, why would I produce a scout when I can just produce another knight? That's, mm. That guy can be like a mini oh, scout. And look, he will find it. it out. Oh boy. He's like, what up, boys? You want your berries? I want something that looks like berries. I want blood. And this, this will spill a lot of blood. Knights keep the main army at bay. Berry workers need to go. BC's distracted because he's being raided on the wood line. He still hadn't shifted the workers, and oh. now when he does, several more are going down. Marine Lord is just two steps ahead of Beastie. And he will slaughter those villagers. And the moment you send your army here to defend, more knights are arriving at your wood line again. I mean, th this is looking grim right now for BC. You can kind of see the look on his face. You know, he, they're going red again. It's happening once again. Marine Lord is just back on form, and this is getting struggle central right now. They're even on military force. You're 16 minutes in the game. This is the stage where Beastie, with his Delhi and his cheaper units, should have more units than the French. Yeah, obviously, remember, still 20% attack speed, right? So he takes better fights than what you would normally expect. Yeah. But if they reset armies, it's just so much easier for Marine Lord to get onto proper numbers because he's 20 Ahead. Because if you're in the min map and you lose a fight, all these premium attack speed archers, they're out in no man's land. The knights will chase them down. We've seen it two times already, and it's led to this snowball effect. Oh. And now, Marine Lord looks to commit in the main fight. Plenty of spearmen here. Is going to back away for the moment, but pokes and prods from the side. And these spearmen, although they charge for longer than previous batches, they don't charge unless they're close enough. And you're already committed at that stage. Knights micro brilliantly by Marine Lord. He goes in again for the clash, and look how few spears remain in this fight. Oh, and now the Dark Knights are diving He's in. Archer's exposed. He can lose the whole army. That's it. It's going to happen. Marine Lord does it. He makes it through to the Grand Finals. Beastie will go out in the second.